tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed. And a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to Tinfoil Hat. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Are you ready to get your mind blown? Good morning, Swarm, and welcome to Tim Fall Hat. You know I am. You know I'm here to do. I'm here to Rawr. join me as always, uh, Xavier Guerrero, and on the ones to Juicy Johnny, J Nice, Johnny Woodard. How hey. are you guys? How are you guys? Woo. Feeling good. good. Loving America. Woo. Loving America. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Nice. Thank you, dude. That was great. Right Guys, I, that was the Beatles, wasn't it? Oh. No, yeah, yeah, I think that I think was. That was yeah. yeah. I'm going to do my own doc where I just make up songs that I'm never going to put out, but I just sit there and sing them. Someone Guys, would buy that mixtape. Guys, someone will buy that mixtape. Guys, we have a great show for you. The return of Mount Crushmore's own Eddie Bravo. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. That's no, too late on that. Work. And then we have from <laughs> the uh, the Tower Gang, Jose Garcon. I think that's how you pronounce Garcon. He's going to be joining us. Uh, and, and they join us and they knock it out of the park. It's a great conversation. We get into the OKC bombing. We get into a lot of stuff. Uh, Timothy McVeigh, OKC, Clintons, all that stuff. It's all there. It's an action packed hour two hours almost right two yeah. hours so uh we hope you guys enjoy this again go to sam everything is there my dates right now i only have one date up but we have a bunch of dates coming we have this saturday we're at the uh the end of the south bay in torrance eddie bravo xavier guerrero myself We'll all be live here. Then we have, I have a comedy chaos that's going to be on July 11th, uh, the second Tuesday. We're putting that together. And then we have August 12th. We haven't even put it up yet on the on the website. We're in Connecticut, August 12th. That's right. Come see us. We're very excited about that. Let me get you the name of that because that would be professional. But we're going to be at the Broad Book Brook Opera House, August 12th. Eddie Bravo, myself, Xavier Guerrero. Come get weird. Two shows. Do the drop-down menu so you can get uh, discounts if you get tickets to both. Again, it's uh, it's uh, stand-up and then our Q&A with Eddie and myself. Xavier will sit there on stage, uh, but doesn't talk a lot. Yeah, ask Just me say, questions. Yeah, no, I'll answer. Ask him some questions. <laughs> T-shirts real quick. Uh, T-shirts are how you get the show. Hey, guess what, guys? Wink, wink, mystery T-shirt up. Wink. Wink. If you know what T-shirt got taken down, wink, wink. He just died. I mean, I feel like we can say it on the podcast, right? Can yeah. we? Yeah, we can. We can well, say it on the podcast. Nobody, I mean, okay, okay. The Unabomber shirt is now available online. Uh, it wasn't before. It is now. It's the mystery shirt. It's so only available for a little bit, or are you going to keep it up? For I'm going to keep it up until nobody wants to buy it anymore. And then we also have uh, our new one, which is it's all just George Bush death cult. It's flying off the racks. People love it. Uh, I'm very excited about it. And so go go to that. We have, what else we got? Oh, guys, I need you to check out Rockfin. Rockfin.com, R-O-K-F-I-N.com. I'm putting out so much stuff on the Tim Fole hat. I'm doing an AMA. I'm doing an uh, Only Conspiracies where I interview. And then I'm doing something I'm really enjoying, which is a deep conspiracy rewind. We just did number five. That's where... We, we go back, we look at old stories, old footage, old movies, and we do a breakdown with Hindsight 2020. I just did the 1992 presidential debate between George Bush, Bill Clinton, and Ross Perot. And dude, it is mind-blowing how they ran it on us on this one. So uh, go check it out. You're getting three shows from me a week. I got Conspiracy Social Club on there. And then we have one 
uh, zero every week. The Cash Daddies uh, Patreon is fire. Patreon.com slash Cash Daddies. Go check that out if you're looking to invest and make passive income and get it rocking. A ton of affiliates right there. You'll hear about them at the end of the show. And then go to nuke.social or click the banner. You can get on Telegram. You can get on Discord. All from there. The the only conspiracy is Telegram and the zero. Uh, Anything else? Uh, We actually have Hibbler. We have Hibbler on tomorrow with Steptone. Why don't you uh, tell him the show? Yeah, we don't smoke the same. Oh, thank you. Yes, uh, the no, we don't smoke the same with Hibbler. Yeah, come on. It's my show. We got Hibbler on. Uh, we're going to go down the moon landing because E-Zone thinks we landed on the moon like uh, an idiot. So. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Yeah. And Broken if you're- Sam. Check out New Broken Sam uh, at Johnny A. Woodard on Instagram. Yep. Check it out, guys. Uh, and just if you're looking for free radio, go to go to the samtriple.com, 24 hour Tim Full Hats, and all things Sam. And then we also uh, have all my. All my st- all my stand up specials are there. All right, man, enjoy this episode because it is fire. We go deep, homeboy. Open your mind. All right, let's get into it. Very excited to have him back in studio. As always, one of my favorite people, my best friend ever, Eddie Bravo. Yo, Eddie is very excited. We got a show coming up this Saturday night. We're going to be at the end of the South Bay in Torrance. We're doing two shows, but you buy one ticket, you get both shows, you get stand up. Then we do a little Q and A after, and then also we have a Connecticut show coming up that we have not been pushing, and I'm sure they're freaking Wait a out. Didn't we change the dates on that? No, not on uh, not on Connecticut. You you wanted to change Dallas. And Texas, oh, right? Oh, yes. Yes, because yes, you're okay. going to Japan. That's September. Yeah. Okay, okay. This one's right. in August. Okay. Yes, yeah, so right. we're going to be in Brook, Broadbrook at the Opera House. Tickets are available at samtriplee.com, and that is August 12th, and we're looking for an August 13th date in Sand, in uh, New York City as well. How's that going? Uh, we're looking. Okay. Because we're looking for the right size. Okay. Okay. What about the place we did last time? It's booked. Okay. It's booked. We'll get something. We'll get okay. something going. And then, of course, uh, we were talking before the show. We got look into it. How's that going? My podcast. Yeah. Oh, it's going great, I guess. I just, <laughs> I put out episodes every week. I just fucking churn them out. I don't pay attention to reviews or what people are saying. I don't give a fuck. I just put it out. If you like it, you like it. If you don't like it, there's plenty of other shit out there you could watch. Yeah, I love it, dude. Well, you just had Alex Jones on there. You do get the best guest, which is very cool, and I'm yeah. so happy you're doing it. Alex Jones is always down. I just text him. I go, hey, you want to do a podcast today? And he goes, yeah, of course. Like, Let's it. go. Let's dude, go. He's down, dog. He is down. Yeah, I love that dude. And he's got to be doing a victory lap right now because, you know, with the gay frogs. He's got yeah. everyone. <laughs> like the one thing they held against him, yeah. they, they, now it's turned out. It's that. actually <laughs> true. Yeah. And it explains, I mean, it's, it's a chemical in pesticides yeah. that starts with an A, yeah. azotine or something. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck it is, but officially there's a chemical in yeah. pesticides that turns frogs into uh, 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 transgender. Other- yes. <laughs> that fucking explains the explosion a of 100%. confused kids. 100%. It explains everybody that works at Starbucks. That's what it explains. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's what it explains. The theory is that the birth control, that the water is infiltrating out the birth control and people are drinking it, like tap water and stuff. Wait a minute. What about birth control? That the water can't filter it out, like the water <laughs> system. Yeah. That they can't okay. filter it out, and that's they how probably don't back want to. Yeah, the frogs. Yeah, probably, yeah, I don't know. Of course. Before we go any deeper, <laughs> let's bring in our other guest so he can jump in on the fun. Uh, I did his podcast. I got a fucking killer podcast called Tower Gang. It gave me a lot of hope for the youth and uh, what they're doing in comedy because they pulled no punches. I'm very excited to have on. Please welcome Jose Galson. How are you, brother? Doing great. Glad to have you on. Uh, I do want to apologize for the visual. I normally have a nicer backdrop. But Worst I green screen room, ever. So. I know. I uh, had to commandeer one of the kiddos' rooms. But uh, I'm excited. It's my birthday. I'm on with randomly with Eddie Bravo and Sam Tripoli. So this is quite the day. This is Happy, dope, birthday. Uh, Happy birthday. Happy birthday, brother. It. How old are you? 32. And where, where, where do you live? Baby. Where do you live? What city? 
uh, like camp area. So if I do oh, cut out, okay. it might be a thunderstorm. So you can't so come know, to our, you can't come to the tinfoil hat show this Saturday in Torrance. Uh, Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> no. Get <laughs> on I'll plane. SamTripoli.com for tickets. SamTripoli.com okay. and uh, come have fun. We got some new stuff. Uh, Eddie's been crushing it out there. Every time I see him, he gets better and better. And uh, yeah, man, every time. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's real fun to watch. You're getting your 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 Bambi legs are getting sturdier, <laughs> and you go out there and, and, and Bambi legs. I love it. Well, you know, because you go out, you kind of get like, oh, is this going to go well? And you, you know, now you're just like you just you're in it. If you feel like it's not going well, you move to something else, and you do really well every time. So it's very fun to the, watch. The, the secret is not smoking weed all day. Because you smoke weed all day, you think about your set and how you're going to go, and you overanalyze. So no, on gig day, I figured it out. For me, no weed all day, no coffee, no caffeine all day, no day drinking, no nothing. And take, a, just nap, just try to nap all day. Just get all that tired shit out. Just, I'm in bed all day thinking about bitches sleeping, <laughs> sleeping, sleeping, <laughs> sleeping. I did a show with Chingo Bling in Houston at the House of Blues last Friday. And that day I just slept all day. I never left the hotel, never. And then by the time it's showtime, I'm so tired of being tired. Yeah. And then as I'm driving to the show, little five hour energy. Oh, no drink. bangs, bro. No, no, no bangs. Too much carbonated bullshit. So just keep it simple. Five hour energy drink, extra strain, half hour before the show, one little vodka soda. Just a little one, boom, to get the juices flowing. And as I get introduced, I have yeah. a pen. And I the first hit of the day is as I'm being introduced, I'm blowing out the smoke as I'm walking yeah, on stage. So that, that, so that right there. The San Francisco 49ers, he's scripting the first 15 plays. No, no, totally, totally. Else. And it works because I've always known that, that uh, you can't shut me up um, after – my first hit of weed during the day. My third hit of weed, um, it doesn't, it's doesn't, it doesn't have the effect. But every night when I teach, I teach and I'm fucking yelling and I'm screaming, I'm talking my motherfucking ass off. And then when we're the class is over at night, I'm the I'm the Mexican there, dog. I clean the gym. I'm mop, I'm mopping. <laughs> I'm scrubbing toilets. And while I'm scrubbing toilets and while I'm mopping. The last thing I'm thinking about is talking. I'm fucking done, dude. I'm done. And I'm I know that. You. I'm done. I just want to go home. But I know once the gym's cleaned and my little crew hanging out and someone rolls a joint and I just want to fucking go. I know it. As soon as I take a, my first hit of weed, you can't shut me up. It's like fucking methamphetamine. You know what I mean? So I know that about myself. And I'll, I know, I'm like, I'll be cleaning. And I go, I know I want to go home. I know I don't want to talk to nobody. I know I'm like, I'm ready. I'm done. I'm ready to go to sleep. But I already know. As soon as I take that first hit of wheat, when we relax after everything's done, you can't shut me up. So I, I strategically wanted to take that and put it on stage. That, that first hit, boom. And for me, that's that's the protocol. You're right doing there. great, bro. Thanks. You're doing great. So Thank when you, you get home and uh, does Kimber want to talk or is she? No, she's yeah. asleep. Oh, she seems great. Like the <laughs> wife and kid are asleep. Dog. Yeah, yeah. they're asleep at eight thirty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't get home till one in the morning. Yeah. They're asleep at eight thirty. Oh my god, I don't want to talk anymore. Yeah. So Jose, uh, uh, real quick before we get into the OKC bombing, because I'm very excited to talk to you about this. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and where. Our, where our listeners can find you and a little bit about Tower Gang. Yeah, uh, actually I actually have two podcasts, one of which is the Tower Gang one, which is my offensive comedy podcast uh, that's <laughs> done with me, uh, Toad, uh, Cole. Uh, it's a whole group of guys. Uh, Clint Russell of Liberty Lockdown has another show as well. He's great. Uh, They're all Yeah, great. he literally, he just uh, today announced he got signed with uh, Tim Pool. He's going to be on two days a week. Uh, I think he's going to be like, the, that's he's going to be running a new show thing. for him. Yeah, it's huge. So it's a big deal. Uh, a lot of big stuff. We other have also have some other big stuff in the going on behind the scenes with uh, with Tower Gang that I can't quite talk about yet. But like I said, that's our offensive comedy podcast. But I have my podcast, 
uh, we kind of all, most of us have our own separate little projects. Um, and uh, my podcast is No Way Jose. Uh, it's on YouTube, all the audio, audio podcasters, Odyssey as well. Um, and in that one, it's like more my uh, outlet for like serious content. Um, just generally speaking, it's just where the hell is interesting to me at the time. Uh, it's just kind of my outlet for that. Generally speaking, that's going to be things like political analysis, uh, libertarian or anarchist theory, and also conspiracies, typically ones that focus on things like government corruption. Uh, I do like some of the crazy stuff y'all get into, like remote viewing and stuff like that. But Malbaga. that's not typically where I spend my effort. I, I just listen to that tinfoil hat when it pops up. So. Well, this is uh, where you yeah. are now. Wow. That's yes. where yep. that's yep. where we all start. It. We all start with like JFK and 9-11. Then you just start going a little deeper and you're like, what else are they lying to us about? And then it eventually brings you to God. And then you start getting into the like you know, the story, why are they trying to detach us from all this from us and God and the, inserting these people who seem like not very good people. Why are they doing that? And it, that's where it goes. I, I always say conspiracy leads to spirituality. But with that said, um, I, you've been we, you and I have been trying to make this episode happen for a while. Just schedules didn't work and whatever, blah blah blah. But you know, you've been you've been very vocal about you know uh, the OKC bombing, what that represents, and what people aren't talking about. So. You know, I'm very excited we could finally have this conversation. I'm glad Eddie could have joined us, and uh, I know he has some thoughts on it, too. So where do you want to begin? Uh, I guess for me, I'd, I'd just go ahead and start with like kind of what sucked me into it, and kind of I guess it gives you a backdrop of where I'm coming from. Uh, and I'd also be interested in hearing where Eddie came from, too, because I don't know his uh, story behind OKC, uh, kind of what dragged him in. But for me, it was I found, if you guys are familiar with a Twitter user, uh, at Crack kind of sore or Jinx, uh, I came across one of his edits, which was a Terrence Eakey edit at one point, and it just sucked me in. It was, uh, it was beautiful. It was uh, you know good music. Uh, I kind of went through the story of the individual named Terrence Seeky, who was one of, if not the first, uh, first responders who, you know, mysteriously ended up roughly a year later, ended up dead. Uh, there are lots of people who seem to think he may have known some stuff. Uh, it was a, you know, considered a suicide. Uh, and that's kind of been the thing I've made my biggest name off of is kind of, uh, um, you know, kind of trying to promote that story. Uh, Terrence specifically, I think it's a good hook to get people interested in it. Uh, but yeah, once I started looking in Terrence Yiki, that inevitably got me looking into the Oklahoma City bombing. And from there, I, you know, wanted to find an expert because I'm by no means an expert. I found... Um, I found uh, I was recommended by a few people. This individual named Richard Booth, who is uh, the essentially the crypt keeper of the largest Oklahoma City or public Oklahoma City uh, bombing archive there is, over at the Libertarian Institute at libertarianinstitute.org/okc. He's the one who spent roughly a decade or so accumulating all these documents and putting them together to where it's like a basically like a Google search engine where you can just type in whatever you want, missing surveillance tapes, whatever, and then you can find it. And I brought him on, and we've done we did a whole series uh, that's on my No Way Jose show. You can find that. Go to playlist if you're on YouTube, or you might have to manually search it up. But it's uh, what really happened to Oklahoma City bombing. Uh, I've covered other stuff too. Uh, but we did about an eight part series, did roughly Damn. about 15 hours breaking it down. I do want to emphasize I am not the expert. I am just some dude who's read a few books on it. I've done, you know, covered it a bunch. I've spoke to a bunch of experts. So I would recommend anyone listen to me. Don't take me as a be all end all. Make sure to go check out my series or other places. Go check out the Oklahoma City archive that I told you about. Uh, the bombing archive, and uh, you know, verify everything I say here. Uh, but yeah, uh, and you know, Richard Booth, like I said, uh, is probably like the go-to guy in my opinion. But yeah, that's that's what sucked me down this road, and that's kind of where I'm at now. Um, I, I I was telling Eddie and every uh, the guys about how uh, I, I did a deep conspiracy rewind on the the George Bush, Bill Clinton, uh, and uh, Ross Perot debate. And just when you watch this debate with, uh, you know, hindsight 2020, and you kind of know what's coming, you, you see it in a different light. And Bill Clinton's getting his dick. I mean, he's not doing well in this debate. Like, he looks scared. He's not, t he's very like, he's got this like fucking doe eyes. Like, he's like a uh, deer in front of a, you know, in front of a car about to get hit. And he's, he's just getting lit up. Uh, George Bush obviously is like, and it's so interesting when you kind of study George Bush at this point, because like you remember the narrative on Bush was that he was a wuss, right? He was a wimp. 
He was light on uh, 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 on the military. In reality, he was a Nazi who fucking is a gay pedophile, <laughs> and he's like a fucking trying to assassinate two presidents. He got one of them. You know, like that's the reality about George Bush. But you look at these guys, lizard teeth. Like it's crazy when you watch this and how they're presenting this like pro wrestling shit. But you you watch and you like the party just wishes you could have a time machine and go back and yell at like what is coming. And part of this is like is like the OKC bombing, which is the 9-11 of the 90s, right? Like this is this is the beginning of them stealing our taking away our personal rights. And and why did they do that? And what happened there? And and this is again the first time just uh, where we start to piece together things after we see this pattern, which is wow, they found the guy within hours. They knew exactly who he was, where he was. And, they, and like, these guys are doing all this shit. They're not even smart enough to get the fuck out of town. They're just like, oh, I'm going to assassinate JFK. And then go watch a movie. <laughs> right? Oh, I'm going to blow up a bio building. And then I'm going to take this beat up car with no license plates and fucking guns everywhere and drive shitty all over. I mean, like, it doesn't even make any sense, man. Unless, unless they're trying to sell you a story. And now you start to understand it. So I want to start out real quick on kind of what your opinion is, why they hit OKC. And if you want to jump in, you can anytime. Uh, why do you think they hit OKC? Uh, me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, really, I'm open to either. I'll give you my honest opinion, but I'll be, I'll let you guys know it is somewhat based on speculation and kind of pattern noticing. I do lean towards the theory that this was essentially what many people call, uh, you know, um, you know, domestic gladio, or you could say like kind of like a Northwoods or something along those lines. I do lean towards that, but I will admit that really aside from, um, kind of, if you're looking at the facts, really, you, you requires a little bit of power nosing and a little bit of I don't know, being a little uh, I don't know, realistic somewhat in kind of the individuals, some of the actors there are. Um, but there is, at the very least, this was criminal ineptitude, and that's putting it insanely lightly. Because at the very least, you can see a lot of the entities that were involved in the bombing were infiltrated to the gills with different uh, intelligence assets. There was SPLC informants. There was uh, ATF and Informants. There was an FBI operation going on. There were former CIA agents that, that, that are involved in this whole plot. So, you know, once you add up all these, there's something weird going on. So, uh, at, at the very least, there's there's the criminal ineptitude at the very least, but I am of the when opinion that it When you say ineptitude, was, like, <laughs> when, when you say that, you mean, like, they took their eye off the ball and it didn't go the way they... It just That's, didn't work, work can out. We get, can we get a shot of the, the, the building and like the whole yes. side? Of, there it is right there. Okay, real quick. What yep. do you think happened? Why did they blow it up and who did it? Hey, zoom in on that one uh, one area that's like very uh, kind of towards the bottom that's like kind of more indented in. Because you got to keep in mind with this thing, this was supposed to be a truck bomb, which would give off a <laughs> radius type explosion. So um, why is it that one area is caved in more than the rest? Um, does that really consistent with a truck bomb, which for one, there are people who doubt it even has that sort of explosive power. Okay, I what, don't know. What, what, what was the, what, what's the official story? And what the do you story think is, is the real story? Well, the official story is uh, that uh, Timothy McVeigh on April 19th, 1995, drove up by himself <laughs> with a uh, yellow rider truck and walked away and it exploded uh, next to the Murrah building. And that's what caused it. the damage you see there. Uh, now, what I really believe is I'm uh, – I – how do I put this? I but hold think on, real that, quick, before you go, go into why. And not only did why did he do it was the narrative was that he was getting back because of Waco. He was mm -hmm. upset about Waco, and he said, oh, "They're the government, but they did Waco." Oh, that's that's huge, right there. So it shuts people up, right? That, that right, are, are right. questioning Waco. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. I want to yep. do a Waco episode because I don't know that much about it. But oh, yeah, that we'll seems do it. Fucking nuts. Get Scott Horton. Waco, He's your guy. Waco's got it. I mean, that whole thing is insane. But go ahead. So they're saying that Timothy McVeigh did it. He had a, he had a van. 
it blew, he parked it under the building. They, he blew it up, and then he tried to get away, and then he got caught. And apparently he did it because he was upset about Wake Up. Wake Up. He was a conspiracy yes. theorist yes, about yeah. Wake Up. Conspiracy Perfect. theorist. Don't kill, forget. Kill a bunch of... <laughs> Domestic terrorists. Okay, they hadn't come exactly. up with that term exactly. yet, but that, so, that was So it. what do you think happened? And what was the reason uh, the uh, Illuminati blew that up? <laughs> Uh, if we're looking for a reason, if we're going to take, like I said, I'm partial to either, uh, you know, some realm of like, say some sort of oopsie, we infiltrated these groups, made them really big, kind of created this, uh, essentially this uh, fake, you know, uprising of a right wing militia movement, uh, and uh, or I guess somewhat of it was real, but the the violent white power aspects of it were definitely <laughs> a lot of Fed stuff. Um, they obviously infiltrated that th or, or elevated that threat by being involved. Now they could have. Like I said, it could have been a sting operation that they just fell through at the last moment. I find that a little silly, but whatever, we can give that to them as a possibility. But on the other end, uh, if they made it happen, my hop, as opposed to let it happen, um, now there are there were reports uh, from, uh, I think it was Ruth Graham, and I forget the name of the other individual, where they said they saw what looked like individuals, uh, I believe it was the morning or maybe it was the day prior, I forget the specifics, they saw what looked like people hanging up uh, – explosives uh, or i guess maybe not explosives but kind of like thin wiring things that would <laughs> the way they described it sounds like these are individuals placing uh you know some sort of like plastic c4 or something i'm not a dem demolitions expert but the way it sounds to me it sounds very suggestive like someone placing charges this was in the uh in the parking garage kind of like on columns and stuff which obviously those would be the places you want to take out now why would they do this um, I think this, you need to look at other things like, you know, if anyone's familiar with things like Operation Gladio or Operation Phoenix, or probably most notable thing would be things like Northwoods, uh, which was kind of the JFK thing where, you know, the Joint Chiefs of Staff came together and they said they wanted to, to you know, essentially do, I forget what specifics they were going to do, if there was bombings, shootings, oh, yeah. whatever, but they were basically going to plan on the Cubans. Um, and... I think a lot of people, you know, especially, you know, because they think of it in, in the in the kind of regards to like Northwoods, they think of it as like, well, we have this thing and then we have this other thing and it needs to lead from one thing to another. Like, for example, we need to create this Cuban threat and we need to have a Cuban and we need to, you know, go to war with Cuba or whatever. But I think it's more of a big picture than that. I think it really is a matter of kind of creating like trauma cycles. 100%, uh, kind of, yes. <laughs> bro. If you study Northwood, I just was talking to um, James from We The People Radio on I'm Rockfin about this. If you study Northwoods and the step-by-step -step plan of it, which is do this giant media blitz about these kids going to Cuba for this big festival, then they say goodbye, hey, we're leaving, we're getting on the plane, everybody. You put the plane in the air, you secretly land it somewhere, you put another plane in, and then you explode it, right? And now there's mass trauma. That is that is. Step by step, the Challenger explosion. Step by step, when they went around and they did, I'm a teacher going on a, the <laughs> spaceship. Oh, my God. I'm just a teacher who loves to teach the children. <laughs> and I'm going to go to space. And, die. and then it just, boom. And now you see pictures of videos of their parents. They're all laughing. They're having a great time. They're just like, and they go, hey, I hope, and then they, they got a letter from somebody inviting them. Hope you enjoy the show, right? It's like, it's, it's and then you go into 9-11. Exactly. Same thing, dude. Exact same thing. So yeah, this is this is all the, the these lizards can't fucking yeah. come up with new plans. They just run the same plan over and over again. Guys, it's getting weird on the internet. You need to protect your data. You need to protect everything. That's why I'm gonna tell you about our friends at Delete Me. Let me tell you about Delete Me. If you're living in 2023, you're on the internet, your data is available everywhere, and it sucks, okay? I don't know about you guys, but I had somebody once try to uh, take out a loan. A loan? In Orange County uh, uh, using my info. No kidding. Yeah. You should have had Delete Me. I, I, if I had Delete Me, I wouldn't have to worry about it, okay? Delete Me protects your data from data brokers. It's just that simple. What you do is you submit your personal information for removal from search engines. Delete Me, Delete Me's experts find and remove your personal information. You receive a detailed report in seven days, and we remove your personal information. 
election every three months. That's how they do it. It's just that simple. Just make it happen. Okay? I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it, man. I'm tired of people using my picture to make fake profiles. I'm tired. Nobody's actually doing that. But, you know, the point is I'm really tired of it. I'm tired of being vulnerable on the internet. All right, I'm tired of dude, it. Dude, and the the report is a cool thing. It literally tells you where they took you out of, like where, like, oh, they took you out of like 300 websites. Yeah. So listen, your data is being sold online by data brokers. You have the right to stay private and protect your personal data, okay? There's a threat of being doxxed, harassed, attacked, okay? Oh. Protecting yourself from your identity theft and phishing scams. It's it, This is what Delete Me does, and they're the best at it. So if you want 20... 20- 20% off for all consumer plans. Just go to joindeleteme.com slash tinfoil. That's joindeleteme.com slash tinfoil. So they blew up the yeah. building to traumatize. The but there's also supposedly some shit in the building that they want to get rid of as well. Yes. I what mean, is that? that one, I, I've never, I'll be to be completely clear. I've never really tugged on that thread too much, but I, I've, the little bit I have, I'm not that impressed with. If anything, that comes off to me as like a narrative of kind of like a, to keep your eye off the ball kind of deal. So to make it what, what narrative is that? What, what, uh, the, like, the, the idea that they're removing documents. Because most of those documents likely would probably be backed up elsewhere. Maybe. I wouldn't be surprised that they also. But I, a lot of people try to extrapolate from that that, oh, they blew up the building to get these documents. And, like, maybe there were documents taken out. It wouldn't surprise me at all if, they, if they are intelligence agencies prioritized, uh, you know, their documents as opposed to human life. That wouldn't surprise me at all. But now, so far as this, like, actually being the, the reason for the bombing, that seems a bit far-fetched to me. Although, I don't know. Maybe it is. Have, you heard, of, I, have, I, I, have you heard of uh, Cody Snodgrass? That is another thread I have not tagged, tugged on too deeply. I've been meaning to for a long time. I know a lot of people talk about him. Uh, and the little bit I've heard, I'm kind of interested, but I, there's a lot, definitely a lot of reading I need to do to kind of like vet it and he, verify he's it. He's got I interviews. Of, uh, I don't know this guy. I, mm-hmm. I've heard a couple. Oh, he's of, with Holy Demigard, so if yeah. Holy's talking about Yeah, him. this guy, Cody Snodgrass, he's, he's saying, this is what he's saying. He's a former CIA asset operator or whatever, that would would get hired to blow shit up, uh, like, in different countries. They give him, like, whatever. A million bucks, go handle this. A million bucks, go handle that. This is what he's saying. I don't fucking know if he's... I've heard heard his interviews. It's fucking fascinating. I don't know if it's real. But he says he's, uh, you know, you know, there's a lot of motherfuckers like him out there, former military... Explosives experts, snipers. What they? they that's who I mean, they hired. Right there, he was he was offered a, m- a million dollars to blow up. Yeah. OKC. Okay, yeah. Yeah. What? So, on the website, it's called the Ugly Truth. Yes, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. So he's saying he when he got offered to be involved in blowing up the Oklahoma City bo- uh, building, that he declined. He's like, I don't fucking blow shit up in my own country. Just you know, I'll fuck shit up in Angola or Chile, <laughs> but <laughs> not. A, so he knew once he declined that he'd have to go underground and hide for a while. So he did. He disappeared. And he also said something too. He said one, it was very interesting, which made me believe him a little bit more. I don't believe anybody hundred percent, but he would say, he said that when anytime he would get hired and he would get, you know, whatever they would give him, let's say a million dollars to, to, kill somebody or blow up a building or whatever he would also have to bring in a couple guys to flank him to protect him in case in case he got the you know oh uh, they they were trying to set him up yeah so he would pay like you know 50k for a couple guys that that were just hired to protect him while he did his job So, so they didn't double cross him that's what he said so when he went underground he went hiding because he knew they were going to come after him for declining and he said, and then, you know, he came out and started doing, like, random podcasts. You could find them. And, uh, he, again, I don't know if he's fucking a, a lunatic or what, but he said that the reason they blew up, there's always multiple reasons. Like, like, right. like 9-11, there's a bunch of reasons. Right. They, fucked, they, they fucked up the Pentagon. So if they're going to do something and they're planning it, they go, shit, hold on, let me get these records over here and put them over there. So obviously 9-11, they blew up. What, what blew up? All those Merrill Lynch offices with all those records from the, those um, 
uh, uh, security, treasury things from the Soviet Union 10 years before. Like, I forget what they're called. I don't even understand the financial uh, process. But when the Soviet Union fell in 91, a lot of American interests came in and they got these security treasuries that are like 10 year whatever and there's there's a uh, uh task forces out there like tax ta- to, to to investigate these uh security bonds or whatever the fuck they are so at 2001 that's 10 years they had to blow up the records because there were there was uh, like the El Dorado Task Force. There we go. That, they were, and that's they were looking at it. So Building so, Six. Yeah, exactly. So they, I think Building Seven was a distraction. Now that well, I'm, I'm starting to think, like, look, because all oh, the yeah. different camera angles of yeah, tower. Dude, stuff, it's, a, I, it's a five camera shoot, bro. Yeah. yeah. So probably you said, let's get everyone talking about Tower Seven, and then meanwhile, Tower Six and Tower Four. That was the real shit. But anyways, so he's saying Tower Four. Well, I don't know. It's like how many towers were no, there? No, I they think tower. Down. I mean, maybe, yeah, but they they keep finding new towers. I think it's they amazing. Are. It's, dude, it's 20, 20 some years. If there's ago. tower six, yeah. there's got to be tower three. No, there's like, yeah, there you know are, what I mean? yeah, And totally. I think they blew them all up. Yeah. But anyways, so Cody Snodgrass is saying the reason, uh, one of the reasons. There was a couple of reasons that uh, there was a giant class action lawsuit against the Pentagon for the Gulf War um, depleted uranium cancer. that Everybody was getting to cancer from like a special, they had a name for it, like fucking Desert Storm Cancer yeah. or something. I, they had a, a special name for the kind of cancer that all these military people were getting from depleted uranium. That's like- The thing they, was Gulf War Syndrome? I yes, think one of the yes, catch-all things. Yes, yeah. Gulf War Syndrome. So uh, this is according to Cody, I don't know shit. He's saying, that there was like a trillion, two trillion, three trillion dollar lawsuit against the Pentagon. They were gonna bury him, and the Pentagon's probably like, damn, we're, we're not gonna have any money to go to the island anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so they took all those medical records, oh. put them in the Oklahoma City bombing. Oh, shit. And, and at the same time, this is what he said. He goes, they also said, fuck it, throw in the Whitewater shit. Yes. The Clinton Whitewater yes. records in there. So they blow up all the records. The case is gone. Yeah. The class accident, yeah. class action lawsuit disappears, and then they get Timothy McVeigh, some MK Ultra military crazy guy. They're not gonna rely on this. They needed to blow up the records, so they bring him in. He probably thinks he's blowing shit up, like got a little van. Meanwhile, they <laughs> rig the building to blow everything yeah. up, and then they blame it on him. And then they confuse everybody, throw a couple Muslims, say, oh, they're like, there's all these reports of, of like people saying, oh, we saw some dark skinned Muslims with them too, terrorists. So everyone's going, folk, terrorists did it. He was working with people. He wasn't alone. The government wants you to think he was acting alone. But look, there was all these eyewitness layers accounts, all, all these eyewitness accounts of terrorists. Meanwhile, they wanted you to argue about that. Was there, did he have help or was he alone? They don't give a fuck. Yeah. Meanwhile, they had pros blow that shit up. Yeah. Where's that class action lawsuit now? It was disappeared. Going back. That's what he said. Yeah. That's what he said. Where'd Whitewater go? Yeah. Gone. Yeah. Right? What Jose said is like the the bomb they said was detonated can't do that kind of damage. Yeah. It's just to be clear, I'd say uh, I said it doesn't look like it to me. I'm not an expert, okay. to be clear. Well, you're on two points. <laughs> it looks you ridiculous to me. Dude, we're gonna <laughs> use this in court, dog. Yeah, so yeah, make sure you get your shit yeah, together. We're, we're gonna we're all gonna turn on you with the feds, yeah. bro. We're like, he told us to say it, bro. We we're just yeah. gonna yeah. but like well because so, if you go to nine eleven and every they, they want you to believe again that that a plane uh, two planes flown that high could cause trauma down here on a building. That's yeah. what they want you to believe. Yeah. Even though your own just experience in life says that's not possible. Yeah. Right? But nope. That, this is the whole thing. And like this whole. It's like gl- double think. It's yeah. Like- that's what they want you to do. Don't believe your eyes, your ears, or your experiences in life. That's yeah. what they want you to do. Every time one of these things happens, the, it's, it's, it's a will break. It's buck breaking your soul in that you are, you, they get you to believe something that makes no sense to you. And you just bend over backwards to buy. Like, oh, man, we got this flu, and we're going to take this vaccine even though we've never done a vaccine this quick before. But it's science, and you know to trust. Like, everything doesn't make any sense. 
at all. This is all the Hunter Biden shit right now is him getting no time for guns and no time for tax fraud is done purposely to break your fucking soul, to break your spirit that they that that the elites do whatever the fuck they want and you don't you don't get shit. The whole reason Camel Toe Harris is in as vice president is so that people go, "Oh, we have no say in anything." They put whoever the fuck they want. Yeah. Even a fucking sack of dog shit. They yeah. didn't even freaking. She wasn't even top five yeah. in the Democratic primary. She's she was the she was polling the lowest. Yeah, it's all about getting you getting the people to make sense out of things that make no sense. Yeah. Once they get that down, then then after a while, you're just like, yeah, it doesn't make sense, but it must make sense. <laughs> I, I see in the in the realm of kind of like MK Ultra uh, is a good way to kind of look at it. I think uh, you know uh, you know think about how uh, this affects the population. As I was talking about earlier with the uh, with the them infiltrating these militias. Now what what does this do to public perception of these right wing white power militias at the time when most a lot of these were probably started by feds? They were kind of you know uh, being run by feds uh, or there was like filled to the rim with feds and it, it makes you wonder to well, how much would this actually be happening if they weren't there and what is what is reality really uh, you know as opposed to what our perception of it is hey guys i want to tell you about our friends at black buffalo smokeless alternatives that's right I, let me tell you about black buffalo but listen, if you're if you're 21 and over and you dip or you chew pouches or long cut, check out the award-winning tobacco alternative, Black Buffalo. Black Buffalo is everything you love, nothing you don't. The feel, the taste, the ritual, just without the actual tobacco leaf or stem. Black Buffalo is actually made from a variety of green leaves in the cabbage family. You can take pride in what you do. Take pride in what you dip. Honor your rituals with Black Buffalo, okay? Black Buffalo makes all the best flavors like winter green, mint, straight, peach, and even blood orange with and without pharmaceutical grade nicotine, okay? You can buy Black Buffalo online. All right, all you have to do is use the promo code Tin foil, okay? You can buy Black Buffalo online at blackbuffalo.com. Use the promo code TINFOIL, okay? Or thousands of retail locations across the country by checking their store locator on the website. What's it? Blackbuffalo.com. Go to store locator, all right? Shop in store, and it's just right there. There's so many. All your favorites, Chevron, Circle K's, AMPMs. They're all there, man. You love this, right? Dude, it's like in my lip. It's part of my ritual. Sometimes I go, well, we don't smoke the same at the soccer games. I'm not allowed to smoke there, so I put a little bit of this. keeps a little flavor going. It works. Dude, you're the best, bro. It's May. Out of your rituals with products from Black Buffalo. Trust me, it fits in to whatever you like to do. If you're over 21 and use products like this, it's time to join the Black Buffalo herd. Head to blackbuffalo.com and use the promo code TIMFOIL at checkouts for 15% off your first order. Use our code TINFOIL for 15% off your first order. One last time, that's TINFOIL. For 15% off your order, okay? Honor your rituals with Black Buffalo. Guys, I want to tell you about one of the greatest American companies out there of all time. Blue Chew! <laughs> That's right. American boners for whoever wants to fuck around and find out. <laughs> Let me tell you about our good friends at Blue Chew. <laughs> Let's talk about sex, baby. Guys, remember the days when you were... Always ready to go. Hell yeah. Now you can increase your performance and get the extra confidence in the bed. Listen up. Bluetooth.com. Made by, made by Americans for Americans. Okay? That's what we're talking about. Just swords and holes. That's what it's all about, everybody. Bluetooth's unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in a chewable tablet for a fraction of a cost. Bam! You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever the opportunity arises, or as I like to call it, boner chicken. That's what I'm talking about, okay? 
Take a boner pill. See the weirdest time you can get rock hard with Blue Chew. That's right. So the process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com. Consult with one of their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. No visits to the doctor's office. No awkward conversations. No waiting in line at the pharmacy. That's right. Blue Chew tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped Directly to your door in the screen package, USA, USA. And unlike me, I go run outside and put fireworks around it so all my neighbors, including the hot chicks that live next door, know daddy's going to pound town. Everyone's going to pound town. Rock our boners to fight terrorism. That's what we do. I want to thank Blue yes. Chew for helping us. Fight terrorism with these rock hard American boners, okay? Giving myself a little bald eagle. That's what I got, okay? So here's what I want you to do. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. And we got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use the promo code TINFOIL at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com. Promo code TINFOIL to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com. For more details, important safety information, and we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast and helping American boners get rock hard. What do you know about Timothy McVeigh that the average American doesn't know? Like, did you do a deep dive on his background? Uh, I'm currently reading uh, Aberration of the Heartland, The Real, The Secret Lies of Timmy McVeigh by Wendy Painting. I'm about roughly halfway through it. Um, and it goes a lot into that, uh, especially the beginning of the book, which I'm kind of on right now. But uh, a lot of stuff I already knew. But, yeah, I've been going a little bit more of a deep dive. But, yeah, with him, I mean, the biggest thing, especially kind of leaning into what we were talking about here is – um, for one, uh, it kind of tracks somewhat. I'm not saying uh, I completely agree with Snodgrass and stuff, I've, but it it wouldn't be that crazy if this somehow tied into some of the uh, Gulf War stuff because, uh, I mean, that would kind of track, narratively speaking, with, with McVeigh because he was a Gulf War uh, veteran. He was kind of at the uh, forefront of a lot of the atrocities happening there. He, you know, very much voiced uh, that he kind of felt bad about the stuff that was going on there, that essentially they were basically just slaughtering Iraqis uh, many times there trying to surrender and stuff and he felt pretty awful about it because he went over there as a young you know 18 19 however old he was at the time kind of expecting you know you know what a lot most kids that age do think hey i'm going over there to protect my country or right. whatever or help right. people and you know lo and behold he was gunning down you know very poorly armed iraqis that were mostly conscripts that clearly didn't want to be there uh and uh you know in like in far superior weaponry um, so, you know, in, he definitely would have experienced, too, a lot of that, like, Gulf War stuff, too, because uh, he was kind of around a lot of that depleted uranium and stuff like that, too. So that would kind of play into that. But uh, he, after he got out of, you know, did his time in the Gulf War, he was still in the military, and he went back home station, and they, he had applied prior. He'd always wanted to be a Special Forces guy, and he applied for the Special Forces. Now, the official story, the story that he's told a lot of people, um, you know, uh, he said that he, within two days, he fell out. He's having issues with his feet, which, uh, I mean, I was prior active duty, and so I can kind of, and I was actually a dropout from something kind of similar, uh, and so I did, uh, I, you know, I, he said he had issues with his feet, and they were blistering up a lot, because I think he had said he had, like, new boots or something, which a lot of people look at that and say it's ridiculous. If you understand the kind of training they're doing in, like, Special Forces, with a lot of rucking with 40 to 100 pounds for, you know, miles upon miles through, like, rough, uh, rough terrain, uh, if you got issues with your feet, that tracks. But, either way, that was the official story he told people, is that within two Two days he he failed out uh he you know they said you know you can come back supposedly he was in bad condition because he had just got back from the war so he wasn't really in a spot where he'd been training his body quite like he would wanted to um but in a let in letters he sent to his sister and then also there were other statements whether whether it was to people you know like he's this was stuff he said to people that he was in death row with uh, this is stuff he said to his first defense lawyers. He said that, no, he didn't actually fail out. What really happened is they pulled him aside and they said, hey, you know, we looked at your, you know, your psychological, through psychological tests, fitness tests, whatever, and we find you to be perfect for this, uh, for this thing, you know, off books type thing that we want you to do. We want you to, be, uh, you know, a covert.
covert type agent of some sort, like essentially be like a military attache to these different uh, intel units and stuff. Can be doing stuff like uh, drug interdiction, drug smuggling, uh, maybe even things like assassination. And and to be clear, I want to say the only thing to confirm this is McVeigh's words. And McVeigh says a lot of different stuff to a lot of different people at a lot of different times, and it really depends on his context. So... I don't know. If you want to believe that, all you have to go off of is the word of McVeigh. But when you start adding it together with some other stuff, it's quite suggestive. (laughs) So, uh, I mean, either way, whether he was a government agent or not, even if he wasn't a government agent, there were other individuals that we can touch on that, uh, you know, kind of fit the role of government agent. So he doesn't even need to fit that role where they could have been provocateurs kind of edging him along. And he could have legit just been the kind of the hapless, goofy right wing guy they played him to be that wanted revenge for Waco. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, believe that which way you want to or not, because it really, like I said, it really just does come down to his word. But this was stuff he was saying before the bombing, the letters. So I don't know. It's not, you, I mean, me, I don't know. Some people might try to say, like, if it was after that he was just, like, making up bullshit after the fact. I don't know. But this was, like, a couple years prior. So, yeah, that's that's definitely something interesting with him. Uh, it's very suggestive. You can take that one way or another. Some people will say stuff that he just really hated the government and he wanted to make them look bad. Uh, I, I don't know. There's There's multiple ways to explain it. But either way, it's very fishy. I mean, didn't they kind of do that with the Boston the Boston Marathon bombing or whatever? Didn't they kind of make the guys do it in a way where they got into their heads? No, uh, I mean, like that whole thing is just they had a they had dude. Uh, so we were talking about this on um, Conspiracy Social Club, but it's, and they looked it up. It's like, dude, there were there were black ops there with black water logos. On their thing. And the backpack that the kid was wearing doesn't fit the backpack that they showed that the pipe bomb supposedly went off on. Why are they putting their logos on shit? Uh, you know, that's a, kind of a weird choice by Blackwater. You know, you're trying they, to sneak they in They think and they're out. untouchable. It's like, it's just like blowing it's it up. It's almost like up. bragging. Like, yeah, it when, is. When, when, it? Gangs, yeah. when gangs throw up gang signs. They're like gangs. Yeah. yeah it's, it's just crazy. like, boom, look, look who's doing this. They know they're going to get away with it. They know they're completely Such covered. Arrogance. Oh, yeah. It's just brand marketing, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. It really is brand marketing. Well, that's what all those Freemason signs are. They do it in fucking in front of cameras. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's like them. It's like a shout out. It's like a gang member throwing up some their fucking set. It's yeah, the same fucking. I mean, thing. you know, who does that a lot. Andrew Tate. I mean, he's literally called Top G. What is the Freemason logo? A G, dude. Like, what, and- what do you think's going on with him? Like, because he just recently got uh, charged for Yeah, rape. it's crazy. It's like, dude, you just got out. Why are you still living there? Like, why don't you just Get move? Wait, I thought he was. Out. Oh, yeah. is he not under, like, house arrest or something? Yeah, I no, he's he under was. house arrest. Yeah, he couldn't leave Romania. His trial is still ongoing. Oh, really? Still yeah, ongoing. Yeah, yeah, whenever, oh, I didn't yeah. know that. My bad. I, I would have tried to get the fuck I out. I would have, too, dude. dude. Like, those interviews, somebody. Yeah. Like, those interviews he did with the BBC and stuff, they were inside his house. Like, they had to go to his Bribe house. Bribe somebody, yeah. dude. Bribe somebody. Get the fuck out. I don't know what's going on there. Go That's to weird. where me either, it's dude. That, weird, that guy, right? like, like I, I, I want to like him because I agree with a lot of what he says about how men are hopeless. But then there are so many clips of him bragging about scamming lonely men out of their money with these women, you know, pretending that they want to come visit. But oh, my visa got tied up. I need a little money. Send me a couple hundred oh, yeah, dollars, dude. And then he just brags about he how he milks thousands and thousands of dollars out of these guys. And, and then he was talking about after he got. Uh, indicted for rape and um, other shit like human trafficking and, and all that kind of shit he's he's got a cigar have you seen that where he has a cigar and he's talking about it and he no. said he said um he's talking about an interview that uh the bbc did and how he like he was like talking about how he owned them and he's like the master well, of owning like people trying to uh, pin him in a corner, and I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, so, so he like, had the, he had the I'm BBC like, coming to their house, yeah, and he agreed to do an interview, an hour interview, yeah. They made that hour interview into 12 minutes to make him look like a piece of shit, and they cut yeah. of all the stuff where yeah. he was like actually like telling him, nope, that that girl's fake, that didn't happen, and then he released his whole hour video, so it kind of, yeah, you can see where the BBC was not playing by the rules. Where they were just making them look bad, and they turn they you typical turn the turn the comments off type of shit. Don't don't read the comments, but they have the comments for everything else. What, Dude, when you what, turn what the comments the, off, what? you're admitting that you're wrong, right? Yeah. Is that what, what that is? The white what, flag for sure. What, what 
what are the different conspiracy theories on Andrew? Because I'm sure there's some people that think, oh, it's all theater. And yeah, then there's some he's people controlled think, opposition. Well, his dad was for sure CIA. He talks about it like daily. He's yeah, like, dude, he's, was he's, big he's one, time. Yeah. I mean, what, what are the theories like? Like they're used. Like maybe his job is to make sure that it, that people don't speak up. Like he's speaking up because this is what happens. Because he constantly is saying, no matter what, they're gonna fuck you up. You talk shit, they're gonna fuck you up. He keeps saying they're gonna fuck you up. Yeah. They're gonna put you in court. They're gonna they're gonna put all sorts of charges on you. And there's fucking nothing you can do. You're fucked. I mean, to me, but, when I hear that, I'm like, damn, maybe everybody should shut the fuck up. You I mean, know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, his argument is if he really was a rapist and a, and a sex trafficker, would he, would he be on every podcast talking? I don't know. Yeah. Would you? I mean, would I, if anybody here, if they had anything, any crazy thing like that in your closet, would you out here being like, oh, doing podcasts and yeah. dropping shit? Yeah. I mean, like, Cosby nah, leave me was. Alone. It is. It, it there's. It's something just off about it, though. If you look at enough of these things, yeah, there's something super off about that whole situation. Well, I agree. I agree with Eddie in that they have been trying to make examples of people to scare people from talking. Yeah. Alex Jones, but they example. also co-opted that. There's been a really positive movement to try to get men back engaged in society. You know, and like no, feeling good you. about masculinity. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it feels like maybe they they kind of took him and, and 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 used him as a way to take that whole thing into a darker like negative mm, energy kind of space. Saying, you know yeah, saying? making it look bad, like yeah, talking yeah. like more look adversarial, like a piece of shit yeah. more against women than. Mm -hmm. and, well, than when you're when your parent is CIA, it's very like yeah, I mean, they on. oh I mean look at Tucker Carlson. Everyone's yeah, yeah. like, dude, he's just out there talking the truth. I'm like. Mm. I mean, I like a lot of stuff he's saying, but I I'm still in karate stance. When when I listen to anything he's saying, you know, and I yeah, and then you, you don't fucking know what the hell's going on. Elon Musk, RFK Jr. You just don't know what the fuck's going on because everyone pulls up, you know, pulls up things on RFK Jr. Like uh, shit he said in the past, like um, the gun like stuff, a lot gun, gun stuff, stuff, climate it, change, climate change. But you listen to him now, and he's saying. Uh, that the deep state is using climate change to control you. He's actually saying that now, but 10 years ago, he was you know, all in on climate change. But now, is he learning as, as he goes on? And then there's people that say, how could you trust the Kennedys? You can't trust the Kennedys, they're deep state. And then I think, wait a minute, didn't the deep state Blow JF, them off. Yeah. Yeah. They blew their heads yeah. off. Yeah, I mean that's some and real JFK deep role Jr. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, didn't the deep state kill, kill JFK, three of them off? Three of them off. So you would think that they have skin in the game to get back at the deep state. Yeah. And not like go along with them. Yeah. It seems like the like the deep state uh, hates the Kennedys more than anybody. Yeah. They they blew their heads off. They haven't blown Trump's head off. But yeah. they blew JFK, RFK, and they, you know, if you look into the John F. K. Jr. plane crash, you look at some videos on that, I'm like, damn, it looks like they fucking murdered his ass. You know what I mean? I don't know nothing, but fuck, it, these videos are pretty convincing. Well, yeah, especially when he, you know, he's running for the seat that suddenly Hillary wants. Yes, it's and it's crazy, right? It is crazy. And then, so with RFK Jr., you know, people say, oh, he's fucking climate change. He's trying to take your guns and all that. Um, and then you hear about what got him into environmental stuff. And like what he said, uh, it makes sense to me. He's saying that he spent a lot of time trying to stop the pollution of the Hudson Bay or the Hudson River because factories were just dumping so much chemicals in the river that there was no life in those rivers. So oh. it was that bad. You know, when you talk about shit like that, I'm like, yeah, that's not good. You know what I mean? No, dumping, I, I'm you know with what I mean? you. That's not good. Killing off the, you know, but do I think that's causing climate change? Fuck no. You know what? The the world is so big locally when sh where shit happens like that, where factories dump chemicals in the water locally, it fucks it. Yeah. Same thing when when there's oil spills. Yeah. Like when that oil tanker in the ocean, you know, uh, spills oil or they blow something up, right there locally, yes, all the 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 marine life is fucked, but. Over time, that shit washes off, and it, I don't believe it affects the overall climate. You know what I mean? The world is so fucking big to think that an oil spill is going to fucking cause climate change. I don't believe that shit. But they run with it. 
So I don't know what the fuck to believe. I don't know if RFK, RFK, when I hear, when I heard him on Joe Rogan's podcast for three fucking hours, dude, he didn't just bury the COVID vaccine. He buried all vaccines. Yeah. I mean, if he was, if he was a fucking, can't, if he ready was a, for that. if he was a CIA shell or whatever, like, like I would have said, if I would have told him if I was Illuminati, I'd go, Dude, shut the fuck up yeah. about the measles vaccine, dog. We don't need to go there. People are already into that. Why are you going into polio? Shut the fuck up. And what's but really- he went into all that. Yeah. Crushed. Yeah. That episode crushes Big Pharma. So I don't know, dude. Maybe he, he he's uh he needs to fucking snap out of that gun control shit. But as far as the vaccine uh department goes, he did a great fucking job. I don't know. Maybe that maybe I'm being tricked. I don't that know. Won't, that I don't one know doctor what's going won't on. that one doctor won't debate him. The that's one what I'm the, saying. The like the shit the, that's yeah. going on with all the debating yeah, and, and that Joe guy's Rogan getting his dick kicked oh, he in. Really is, I dude. mean, like, bro. I mean, th- you want to talk about Streisand effect? That guy <laughs> fucking fucked himself, bro. That guy, dude. The the internet is running a train Four tens on or something. Yeah. Oh, Do you yeah, know how much he's tens. worth? He's worth like thirty million dollars. Yeah, he's trying to act like I got no money, and like yeah. everyone's just bringing up the receipts. And every time he makes a <laughs> statement, yeah. they just the internet just annihilates violates him and he'll he's never going to be able to go up there and debate and all these people like they're labeling kennedy a conspiracy theorist they're showing their true colors all it is is name calling this is a guy that got monsanto's to pay out a huge amount of money because of the poisons he was putting in their fucking their weed killer stuff i mean like dude this guy is guy this guy's got the receipts i think i used to think joe rogan was the greatest at remembering every name of everything and every camp dude jam rfk jr is is insane now what i think rfk jr is doing amazing is also going on as many podcasts as possible people are now getting used to that voice they're yeah, getting used yeah. to it it's not as traumatizing as when you yeah. when you, you oh first the first get, 10 minutes uh, i was like I'm not, i can't listen to three hours of this and you end up listening to it like oh that's not that bad yeah then you, you start getting used to it so now he pops up on another podcast and it's not traumatizing as much i i think it's a really brilliant fucking thing for him to do but going back to alex jones so uh, you know there's that part of the internet that is like alex jones is controlled opposition okay and they go yeah he says all these crazy things to get the conspiracy theorists to look bad and then you find out all the chemicals are making frogs gay so now what i know he's got well, yeah what what is that i mean rfk jr was talking about that he's, yeah he's they, and they bring up frogs which is crazy because alex jones got railroaded for saying there's chemicals that are turning frogs gay, right? Yeah. He got railroaded for that. And then RFK Jr., without even bringing up Alex Jones, he just saying, yeah, they found in studies with frogs. Like, <laughs> there's, like frogs? That they're changing these this chemical that's in pesticides. What's it? It starts with an A. Like I think it's like atrazine, maybe it's something, something like that. that. Is yeah. it, what's it called? I'm making sure it says atrazine leads to AZT because it makes you gay and you get it. No, I'm yeah, that was great. That, I thought that was great actually. Yeah, again, so there's a chemical in pesticides that is turning frogs into a different lady gender. frogs. And and then and then Alex, that was like the main thing that people like. They couldn't yeah. believe that Alex Jones said that right. they're turning the frogs gay. And it turns out, Alex, hashtag Alex was right. Dude. Yeah. yeah, hashtag Alex was right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that goes that goes back to my MK Ultra point earlier when we were talking about uh, you were talking about the chemicals that are obviously possibly making men possibly more feminine, and then on the other hand, you have individuals like Harley Pasternak who are uh, influencing celebrities like Ellen Page and Ye and all sorts of other people. And uh, now we have this perception from the top of look how big this whole trans thing is, and uh, how does this get inflated, you know, and how does this affect perception, you know? Yeah. No, you're totally 100% right. You can watch every single step by step by step. And again, it gets back to not believing your eyes, not believing your experience, your, your ears or your experiences. And that's what they want you to do. That's this whole thing, man. It's just like they're all it's everything is demoralizing. That's their whole thing. This is why I tell people when I get these black pill people come on who are, are insanely great researchers, it's like, do you see how this is a spiritual thing? And a lot of them can't go there because it's not data. It's like yeah. they can't get into the not data part. And it's just yeah. like this explains it all why they're doing all this shit. So I want to get back to OKC real quick. Um, I got to be really 
Okay, and he's got to pee perfect. So uh, that's a conspiracy. Does he really have to pee? Or, or, yeah, did, yeah, yeah, or yeah. did he get a text that we're getting it's too getting close too to the heavy. truth? <laughs> did, we, <laughs> did Soros hit you up and tell you we're getting too close to the truth? Uh, so uh, I love this next thing. Uh, let's get into John Doe 2. Who's John Doe 2? Uh, John Doe 2, like I kind of comically was alluding to earlier, that the official narrative is that there was one guy, Timothy Fay, who got in that rider truck and walked away and uh, exploded and killed roughly 170 people. Uh, well, in reality, there were over 20 people the day of, uh, before and after, that saw uh, Timothy McVeigh with an under, uh, another individual or individuals. Uh, and um, uh, ironically, we, the, the way that Timothy McVeigh got put away, he got identified as one of the vit, uh, witnesses, we, they, it was perfectly legit to get him, to, you know, to get him guilty and all that, uh, you know, through court. But all of those same people who were saying they saw this McVeigh fellow also were saying they saw another individual. But we just kind of hand wave that away. Forget about that. Um, a little timeline of events. April, the bombing happened in May. There were internal FBI memos uh, talking about how they were going to put all leads into John Doe 2 into abeyance, which is just a fancy term for don't pursue these leads. Uh, and then April, J April, May, and then June, that's when the FBI kind of came out with their official narrative of, uh, oh, that was just, you know, they kind of, you know, uh, they misremembered or whatever. They ima essentially imagined this under other individual, and we just kind of pushed this away. And it was also weird at that time, too, where they were doing this kind of like double speak thing where they were saying, no, we're not pursuing that anymore. But then sometimes the, the press would really push them on. They're like, oh, we're still looking into that. So they kind of played out both ends of their mouth. But the official story became, nope, John Doe 2 doesn't exist. Obviously, you know, John Doe 2 never got identified. Um, he was described as someone roughly kind of like 5'7 to 5'10-ish, kind of stocky. He was described as kind of being very muscular, big bull neck. Uh, he was kind of ethnically ambiguous. So that's where some of the Middle Eastern stuff comes from. But he also could have just been like a dark-skinned white guy. And yeah, the John Doe 2, he, like I said, over 20 people identify this guy. He, uh, you know, there's a comp composite sketch uh, online that you can bring up easily. He's pretty famous, John Doe 2. People, a lot so, of people recognize that immediately. But yeah, uh, that's, that was John Doe 2 for you. That got dropped real quick, and it kind of makes you wonder why. I mean, my opinion is likely it's sketch. because it was probably either an informant or an agent oh, or somebody who had information that they didn't want to get out. Uh, quick question on, on the witnesses. Did anybody ever go back to the witnesses and ask them, like, hey, did you forget? Did, did someone give you some money to act like you didn't see these people? Because, I mean, 20 people, you, can, you should be able to find at least one of those witnesses again. Uh, I mean, people have talked to these. I mean, I can't give you specifics off the top of my head. But, yeah, a lot, a lot of these people did hold true to their story. I think there was, like, one guy who later was kind of like, oh, yeah, it was one. So, uh, but, yeah, a lot of these people stuck to their story, uh, never really changed it at all. So, yeah. I mean, I actually recently, not too long ago, had on Stephen Vassar, and it was his first time, like, an interview. It had just been a uh, source for a CNN article. Uh, and he was best friends with Terrence Hickey, or one of the, his best friends, like, one of his better friends. And he also was a John Doe, too, eyewitness. He saw, and he actually, he, you know, as I said, over 20, that number may not even be accurate because he made a police report. Because Stephen Vassar was a, a one of the first responders as well. He was a you know, cop at the time, uh, you know, was on the force with Terrence Yiki. And he said he saw at one point before the bombing, he saw a rider truck drive by him. And because he was responding to something else, you know, uh, he was a few blocks away. And he saw what he said he swears, you know, to, I forget the exact quote, but something like a hand to God or something like that. Uh, you know, I swear where there was another person in that. I mean, he wasn't able to provide like a detailed like idea of what he looked like, but he knows for a fact there was a second person in the rider truck. Uh, and yeah. he made a police report and that ne he never got interviewed by the FBI. So that his not that one guy that I interviewed was never included among the the uh, like over 20 people that saw him. So it makes you wonder how many other people uh, did it how many other reports were just magically disappeared because another part of uh, Vassar's story is he later years later went to go look through the system because he had access to it to look through past reports, and his report was gone. And that's not a thing it's supposed to do. Uh, so he's kind of like, what the hell? Uh, I definitely made a report on this, and it's gone. And that's not a thing that's supposed to happen, uh, at least my understanding of how police reports work. The crazy thing is uh, this: the sketch artist. Like, how the fuck do you see somebody in a truck pass by, and then you tell an artist what the fuck that guy looked like, and then he comes up with what he looked like? 
I'm missing some here. I never really got that. You know, yeah, like, uh, well, like I said, there was over 20 people, so it was a composite sketch of all their descriptions. Yeah, but still, yeah. how do you describe <laughs> what a dude looked like in your head, and then an artist can make it happen? And I, then you might, yeah. and then someone might go right. to jail for that. Yeah. Someone's gonna go well, to that, jail for that. That does happen. Oh, yeah, of course, that it happens. does happen. But the crazy thing is when they arrest somebody. And then the 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 person doesn't look anything like. Here's, yeah, here's some comp comparisons. Well, right dude, here. that guy looks like Anthony Cumier right there, right? That one guy, in the, right, the next one. Wait, let's see these. I mean, that one's pretty close. Oh, right how about there. that guy? Who looks like uh, Science of the Lamb. He's got a Science of the Lamb mask on. Oh, that is weird, isn't it? Yeah. Wow, that is crazy. They've nailed a couple yeah, of them. Yeah, some of them. Yeah. yeah look I mean, up the John Doe maybe, one. Maybe yeah. look like up John they Doe knew one. exactly what they got here. Here's a picture of him. Just draw that motherfucker. I, right. We're I gonna think frame that him. does happen. We're gonna dude. Frame so that's McVeigh, John Doe one. You know what I mean? Yeah, so okay. you can kind of get an idea of how close it is to what he looks like. So, yeah, see on the left there, that, that one the is one it? right next to the other guy. No, no, oh, no. No, not that one. That's John Doe two. Oh, okay. Yeah, that does right there. Yeah, totally. Yeah, they got yeah, the haircut the left, and everything yeah. in. Yeah. By the way, that guy looks like every bully in every animation. Doesn't he oh, look yeah, like yeah. every bully? <laughs> yeah, 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 you're right. You're so right. Yeah. What up, nerds? Yeah, yeah. Eddie, so do you say that artist was a great artist, or do you think they gave him a picture of, like, hey, make someone look kind of like Timothy McVeigh? Because that's pretty close, though. If you I don't know. Me, if, they're trying, if there's some, like, deep state Illuminati shit going on, and there's a plan, there's, like, a plan, they would get, like, a sketch. Like, like if there's, like, a plan... To kill somebody or something in a city, you're an idiot if you don't got the yeah. corner in your fucking back pocket, yeah. right? You gotta have the corner, right? Yeah. It doesn't seem like you, like when when someone gets suicided, and they got two bullets in the back of their head, yeah. and then the corner says suicide, cause <laughs> of death. That's a, to me. That's a gangster message sent out to anybody who wants to talk. We own the corner, dog. Look, I think it was it, when people go, look, he got shot twice in the head yeah. and then once in the yeah. chest and they called it a suicide. Yeah. Like, why would they do it? Why would they make it look sloppy? In my opinion, you make it look sloppy on purpose to let everybody know, dude, we could put nine bullets in the back of your head and it's still going to say suicide. <laughs> you, sure, you sure you want to keep yipping and yapping? So do you think Jeffrey Epstein, that whole thing was just a flex move? Like, look, this wasn't even suicide. We can, we're just showing you if you fuck around, we can act it like could a suicide. Be like, why wouldn't you do that? It, it's like, um, like if you look at cartels and gangsters, you saw Cocaine Cowboys? Yeah, yeah. yeah. When, they, when, someone, when they get rid of someone... They, they don't disappear him. They could easily just disappear him. They chop him up, put, and put his body parts in a suitcase, chop his tongue off, or chop his dick off, and, and ram it down his throat, put it in a suitcase, and then drop it off for everyone to see. I mean, yeah, the cartel now just Yeah, they're really, like, dude, yeah. like, are you sure you want to talk? I'm going to do this to you. Like, to disappear that guy would be stupid. No, yeah, no, and you, and you want to chop them up yeah. and show everybody, hang them on, fuck. No, they're hanging people now from bridges yeah. in Mexico. That's they're hanging what, out to I'm... show the car to show the other cartel, like, look, we don't even give a fuck. No. There's your, so, there's you your know homie. what I mean? I think that's what yeah. you know, and and you know, for people out there that think that everything is rigged and there's just like the elections are all rigged, uh, like they are rigged. But there's people that think that uh, elections mean nothing. Like, it doesn't matter what you vote. I got gotcha. Like, you know, if, if it didn't matter... Why would they be... Why would they be rigging? Why would they be doing all these layers with all the ballot harvesting? So, to me, elections are real, but they're rigged and they got them all under control. You know, whether, you know, it's that front line with the machines or the, the ballots or... Um, what do you mean they're real, then? I don't quite understand that part. The elections are real. They just rig them. Well, what what is what do you mean by real? I guess that they're what do important. Mean? They're important. Is that no, what no. You're real, saying? real means yes. If they weren't rigged, the elections would count. But the uh, there's like you could think that elections aren't real, and like anything, like it doesn't matter. Nobody's counting the votes. It's already decided who's in. There's people that think that. Oh, I got like you. Like the, okay, the, okay. nobody's counting the votes. It doesn't matter what vo there's no counting going on it's just it's all for show it's all theater and the, whoever they want to win is going to win it doesn't matter i don't believe that's the case i believe that there are elections they just rig them they rig them with uh but the elections count you're saying they're important and that's why they have to rig them to, exactly but that's they, what 
But if they didn't count and it didn't matter, they wouldn't rig them and they would just, t- hey, dude, this guy won. It also suggests that there's more than yeah, one group theater, trying to the, get it there. Doesn't, yeah, but it's all theater. Yeah, if it's all theater. Why would they go through all this? Yeah. Why are they rigging it? Why are they butt ballot? Have you seen 2,000 2, mules? Yeah. There, there's a system of ballot harvesting that they do in a, b- a bunch of different levels. Like, uh, there's a bunch of different things. Like, I, I can. With uh, the machines, yeah. with the machines, like, if. Uh, you filled out your ballot with a Sharpie. It's going to shoot it out and it's going to, or whatever, like a pencil or whatever, like something like either a Sharpie or a pencil doesn't work for the ballots. So if you're in a Republican uh, area, they're going to give Republicans like obviously, Oh, here, here's a Sharpie, fill it out. Then it shoots it back out. There's different ways to cheat. And then with all the, um, the addresses with the registered voters, either they're dead or everyone's using this certain house as an a, a address. Like, they wouldn't need to do that if it was all just fake, uh, right? So, like, why would they uh, suicide people? Are they? Is the body count real with the Clintons, like the 600 and whatever, what, or 150 or whatever it is, of all these people that were killed trying to go after the Clintons, trying to put the Clintons in prison, they get suicided. Yeah. Right. Why would they suicide him if it was all uh, a theater? Like, it wouldn't matter. Like, why would you pay somebody to kill somebody and hang somebody if you weren't afraid of going to jail? When people get suicided, that means someone's afraid of going to jail. This guy's getting too close. Let's kill this motherfucker. Why would they do it if it was all theater? To me, most people are corrupt in the government, but there's good people. If there wasn't good people... In the, in the government, if there wasn't a few, there's a few, I think. Devin Nunes, he seems like he's legit. Cash Patel, he seems like he's legit. Um, Matt Gates, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. It seems like they're doing, it seems, they could be tricks, I don't know. But it seems like they're the good, there has to be good people in government. Otherwise, nobody would, there wouldn't be a need to hire a motherfucker 50K to kill this motherfucker. Why are they doing that? The only reason people are getting killed and suicided and silenced censored why are you censoring people if it didn't matter why would there be censoring so it does there are some good people that's why there is censoring if it didn't matter they wouldn't need to do any of that so it does matter so what you need to find out is who are the good people and what what are they trying to do and what are we trying to accomplish here um i think you know everybody agrees that uh, sports and 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 just garbage tv are designed to distract people right yes. So if they're designed to distract it, why are they? Why do they need to distract you? If it's all fake, if it's all theater, why would they need to distract you? They need to distract you because they don't want you to pay any attention to how they're stealing our tax money. That's does everybody agree with that? There's distractions like sports and all that distract people from paying attention. Can I just say one thing? I I don't think they're stealing our tax money. I think what they do because our taxes tend to go to pay off the interest on the loan money that we're doing that we're borrowing what they're doing is they're they're just using this giant fucking system to f- print unlimited money to fund the military industrial complex and this is somewhere i've gotten into is that i think the center of the new world order is switzerland and yes. and that the the vatican the city of L- L- london and washington dc are just different basically uh outposts bases. bases for each one of the ways you control it and they they hijacked our military because america was so new they came in they hijacked it and they just use our our fed money to fund their 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 fucking stormtroopers so our when everyone's like our tax money's going all right i think our tax money goes to pay off the to attempt to, or this the the illusion of paying off interest on the money that we're borrowing but we're never going to pay it off ever. I, think, I think tax money is the only money you can steal if you could steal tax money figure out a way to come up with a bill create like some conflict in some faraway country and then get everyone fucking all sad about it and then to send <laughs> aid you know what i mean oh we need billion dollars to, to this country yeah you know that's where they're stealing the money you know um because tax money is the only money you can steal where you're not going to have people coming after you fucking you know, uh, hunting you down. 
You know, any kind of money you steal, any you steal personal money, money from a corporation, you're gonna get killed. You're gonna get thrown in jail. They're gonna come after you. But if you if you can figure out how to steal tax money, no one's gonna come after you. Yeah, because nobody. So that's the that's the that, and that's where all the money's at. It's all in the taxes. Think about all the fucking money in taxes. And if you could figure out a way to steal it, ain't nobody gonna kill you. They're not gonna come after you, right? So, um. Uh, if everything's theater, why is there a need for uh, Klaus Schwab and uh, World Economic Forum? We need that. They need propaganda uh, because there is a fight. There is a fight between um, good and evil. And there's in government, most people are evil for sure, Republicans, Democrats. But I think the left clearly is way more infested than the right in the right it's infested, but there's still spots. There's got to be good people in government. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a need for fucking propaganda. Anybody good in the so we just need So we just need to find out who the good people are and, like, rally around them, try to change fucking the election process to make if the election process was legit. Really, the big problem is the media. The media is the biggest fucking problem because they got that shit captured. And most people that are still zombie sheep out there they they believe in fucking MSNBC and seeing it. There's still people that believe that shit. Le less and less, less and less Rachel people. Rachel Maddow's still talking. Yeah, yeah. less like, and less people. Still talking. More people are awake than ever before, but man, there's still a lot of people that are asleep. So uh, I think I think that if you don't pay attention to what's going on politically, all the corruption, yeah, it's all corrupt, most of it. Not everything, because if, again, if it was, then there wouldn't be a need for propaganda, there wouldn't be a need to suicide people, there wouldn't be a need to censor. All, look, look at all the censorship that's going on. If, the, if, if it was all rigged, why would they even censor anybody? They wouldn't give a fuck. They censor the truth because they're worried about the truth. Yes. So if they're worried about the truth, then you need to get down and figure out what the truth is instead of saying, oh, it's all rigged. I'm just going to put my fucking head in the sand. All right. So they like it. They, I think the controllers like it when people lose faith in everything and they just are totally black pilled and they just lose faith in, because those people aren't paying attention. They, they just lost all faith. So yeah. they're not paying attention. So they got those. They don't care about those I people. Because if you're not paying attention, you're not paying attention to how they're stealing your tax money. You ain't doing shit. If you're just going to fucking go off and um, disappear into the woods and, you know, live on, <laughs> off the land, that's a beautiful thing. But you got to pay attention to the politics. You got to pay attention because that's the number one goal is for you for that for them for you not to pay attention they don't want you paying attention they don't want it because if you pay attention there might be uh you, you're gonna figure out how they're stealing <laughs> our fucking money or what's going and on it, with these local these local um uh school boards where people start going to, well, what are you teaching our kids now yeah, everybody's involved you gotta pay attention locally for sure you got you got to get involved in local politics you gotta do something you know, and what I do is, you know, I, I, I try to uh, seek the truth. I, on my podcast, I try to interview uh, people that um, I feel aren't full of shit and are looking for the truth. Maybe they're wrong with, with some things, but, you know, you got to be honestly looking for the truth. You can't ignore everything because it's not all scripted. It's not all scripted. If it was, there wouldn't be no need for censorship. They'd be like, why even bother with censorship? We got you on lock. But they're censoring the truth because they're afraid of the truth. And that means the truth still has uh, hope. And uh, you can't ignore everything. And there's, there are good people in government. They're all government. It's so easy to say, oh, everybody, everybody. No, Devin Nunes, dog. Devin Nunes is legit. Cash Patel, that motherfucker's legit. Listen to these motherfuckers. They're trying, dude. There's fucking a, there's a special forces a group out there. I agree. That are trying it's to save universe. this shit. There are good people trying to save this shit. In your job, if you have kids especially, find out who are the legit people. I don't know who all the, I just, you know, maybe Devin Nunes is full of shit. Based on what I said, I got, that guy's really going after the truth. That guy, you know, and. You think there's some good people in the DNC? Uh, 
Uh, I think the good people would be leaving, like Tulsi Gabbard. Okay. I think Tulsi's legit. I think she Here's is. Here's the thing about I think she is. liberals. They do, uh, most liberal, I mean, those progressives are just weirdos, in my humble opinion. Liberals, to me, they don't join government to get power. They When they want to do their help, they, they like to go on the local level, charity yeah. events, working on the street level, try and get help people with drug abuse, all that stuff. They, they're, it's not the nature of that group to seek power. You know, you have people like Elizabeth Warren who all came, started out as Republicans and then they they flipped to Democrats because they thought it was an easier path to power. That's my humble opinion. And, you know, uh, there, for me, man, it is it is it is all it, 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 everything is. What, what was my point? I lost my fucking thought. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I think most good the- most of the left by this point is uh, infested yeah. and the, our only hope. And again, I've never been Republican. I've never voted Republican. I never voted. I'm not conservative. But as you grow older and you have kids and you get married, you realize how important family values are and how important the Second Amendment is and the First Amendment, freedom of speech. And um, if I didn't have a kid, maybe I would disappear into the fucking mountains. You know, but I have a fucking kid, dude. I got to pay attention and we got to figure out what the truth is. I agree, dude. I don't know what the truth is. I don't know. I'm hoping Trump is legit. I don't know. He might be a, a, a shield. But one thing I know is the deep state is going after that motherfucker full clip. They're going after him. They've been going after him. They flipped on him since he ran for president in 2016 and won. You know, so... Um, is it's that is crazy. that is that theater like them like constantly going after him and trying to put him in jail and everybody going after him, dude? That fucking uh, laptop Russian disinformation thing where they got fifty one intelligence officers to say the laptop was Russian yeah. intelligence while him and Rudy Giuliani going, dude, we got the laptop, dude. These guys are fucking the the Bidens are doing some crazy criminal activity, yeah, and uh, so. Man, there is that can't be theater that they're going after him so hard. That's got to be real. And if it's real, man, he might be the one that has the balls to save this fucking world, man. He might be. It I might mean, be a trick. Uh, you, it you, might you, be he a hasn't trip. been president before. I mean, uh, yeah, how'd he, that go? What was that? I mean, how, how do you think things went when he was president? Like, I think, I think, I think, you know, looking back now, it was great because he unplugged everything mm-hmm. that that the deep state uh, had plugged in, and then when they rigged the election and brought the Biden administration in, they plugged it all back in. What do you think so about him bringing BlackRock into the into the administration? Um, I don't know about that. Yeah, he brought Bla- BlackRock into uh, the Fed. The Fed, yeah. they basically used BlackRock fucking services. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of shit. You can bring up a lot of stuff. BlackRock's computer you, yeah, uh, software to run the Fed. Yeah, like people that people think, oh, well, he's a Freemason, or I mean, yeah. uh, people say this. People Here's say, what say about, about this? Trump. There's, there's the one thing is, uh, like, a, why did he, why did he fire Fauci? You know what happened? To yeah. Fauci? Like he put Fauci on stage, dog. Maybe that's genius shit. Everybody, dude, Fauci is gonna be hard for him to walk the streets, dog. It's going to be hard for Fauci to walk the streets when it's all said and done. And he put him on stage. If he would have fired him, no one would have remembered Fauci. If he would have fired him, nobody. Is the DNC going to Bernie Sanders, um, Robert? Of course. If, yeah. They're, They're going to try, it. but I, I just think, like, if they do that, that's officially the death of that party. See, things are getting exposed, man. Everything's I, now, getting I, exposed. This is what I agree with you on that stuff, that whether Trump is or isn't a shill, he did illuminate a lot of shit. He and unplugged all their shit. And he's the totally against... The peace accord dude, and all he, that shit. Yeah, the, the Paris Accord. Dude, he's totally against climate change. That's not deep state shit. Deep state is all about climate change. And he's all against it. He thinks it's all bullshit. He pulled us out of the Paris Accord. That's a good sign. No, bro. 100%. That's a good sign. 100%. Yeah, I mean, but, there, you know, I don't know, dude. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Uh, you know, is he... People think he's like an Israeli agent. That may be true. He might. People say he's a Zionist. He's shill. definitely Zionist. I mean, is but he, I think did he, you did have he to play that? ball. Is is he? Mm-hmm. If 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 he did, if Eddie, there's he, a plan, if there's a plan to save the world that Trump claims and, and MAGA and all that shit. If there's a plan, there's got to be a lot of like 
uh, shit he does for the plan, for like, like, like you know, what you would do in a, um, a sting operation, right? If you're going to take down these drug dealers, you know, and you're, you, you know, you're, you're going to be all about them drug dealers and do some drugs with them. If you're going to take down the you know OKC I mean? building. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I don't know. He could, look, Trump could, this all could be a trick and we could all be fucked. This could all be, I don't know. I but don't know they're fucked. going after him, dude. Yeah, I'm with they're you. They're going yeah. after him for real. Why are they going after him so hard? What the I think fuck? it's because he's a bull in a china closet, personally. But then the, I think there was a lot of shit he broke, and uh, I don't. Know, I'll be honest. I'm fine with most of the stuff he broke, and uh, I'd be down if he did come back. And he actually is as upset as he tries to make it out like he is, and goes against those certain agencies. Now I don't. He's he's, uh, he's not a. Global. No, I kind of doubt he will. I don't know. I, I here's what I think Trump is. Trump represents a different crime organization. And it's kind of like what I've been saying about Switzerland. If you look at Switzerland, like if you look up everything about them, it's beautiful, it's clean, good economy, smoke weed, they got guns. They're all good. Why? Because the crime boss wants a clean neighborhood. Do you understand? Yeah, like yeah. if you live out in the crime boss's neighborhood, there's no crime, it's clean as shit. Okay, he represents to me a different. Yeah. This is a fight for power. He represents a different fight for power. I personally think he's a nationalist. I think he played games with Israel. He one hundred percent limited speech on campuses. He violated the First Amendment. I'm saying if you think anybody in that position is pure, you're fucking in the fairy tales. It's just the way it is. Everybody has to fuck. You have to dance a little dance to get that. Look at Jam RFK with the Israeli tweet. Yeah. He instantly had to take it down and then start sucking off rabbis <laughs> to fucking. What, what was up with that tweet? So Roger Waters does this Nazi thing in Germany. And of course, you know, all the Zionists hate Ro Roger Waters. not even Waters. a Nazi thing, though. I mean, that's what just was it? It was like. Well, he, was, he, does, he, he does a character that's a nationalist, like. Uh, sort of a, a dictator type figure in in he's acting it's acting and and they people will just slap this image around because he looks like he's kind of dressed in Nazi yeah. regalia. it's clearly yeah. meant to be like a a nod to that but he's acting <laughs> and they're saying he's like praising Nazis but, which is that's the exact opposite of the message of the album and the song I, I can I believe that I be, when I hear Roger Waters talk he sounds like he's uh uh you know at he's least 80 percent 80 percent Common sense. Well, dude, and I love that. The, the and think about this: how they flip everything, and then we're gonna get back to OKC. I promise. But how they flip everything now, like being a nationalist is now considered bad. Think yeah. about that. Yeah. Like that, the fucking Nazis. Oh, we're we're. I get it. We're we're democratic nationalists. Is that what it is or na or national socialist? So so now you get this group, and their whole thing is about fucking taking over the world. Which is a globalist fucking movement, right? Now they're saying, oh, if you're a nationalist, you're a Nazi. By the way, I go to Canada. They love being Canadian. You go to England. They love being England. We're the only country where we're not allowed to be a proud. That's more like patriotism, yeah. though. Right? Right. Yeah. But see, that's it. They're it's, trying to demonize patriotism. You can't. You, if you have an American flag in your car, Republican. What a piece of shit. Yeah. It's yeah, especially like in LA. That's not that to me that was it's wild. Back Don't, then it was not yeah. like yeah. Isn't it I part of me though has that Hicks streak that's like, why are you proud that you happen to be born on a patch of dirt too? Like cause that's yeah, the kind but of thing that, that gets too. you to die for your country. Yeah, but for, that's where I, I limit it. That's yeah, why you know that's why I'm like that's where I'm limited. But like to the ball be games, proud the flyovers be, and all that shit. That that that's where it, I, I feel like that's a, it's a slippery slope. But to if that you're shit. like listen, I don't think American lives are worth more than other people's lives. I think we're all human beings and we should respect all of our our, our rights to well, have right, a yeah. family, laugh, get laid once in a while, and all that shit. The there are certain times where I'm like, I want my country to do great. Sports and business. Like if we invent a fucking business here, I want it to stay here and hire Americans. I don't have anything against Ethiopians, Iraqis, or anything like that. I want them to flourish too. Yeah. And there's enough that we could all flourish. Mm -hmm. But they've demonized this idea that you actually would put your country in anything first. 
where the, every other country, dude, look at when a British boxer comes here and fights. They fucking fly. The whole country flies here to support him, and then they, they sing the national anthem. Nobody's going, oh, these fucking Nazis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These fucking Nazis. Look at these Nazis singing God Save the King. These fucking Nazis. They don't do that. This has been this giant psychological operation to get people to not want to support where they fucking live. Uh, I am capitalism. I'm not for crony capitalism. I don't fucking think that we need to go and rape and pillage other countries to keep the prices down. There was a time where we didn't have fucking free trade. And guess what? Shit was cheap. Okay? Because there's only there's a price point. And they fucking lied to you about that. Can you that. put that back in the box, though? The genie back 100%. You think so? Okay. Bring it all back here. You hire everybody here. Everyone's got a fucking job. Now we got money to buy stuff. And we're starting to find out this whole thing about, oh, man, we got to get profits up. We got to keep profits up. Because, you know, Wall Street, well, now we're realizing it's a giant Ponzi scheme. And that the ESG oh, shit yeah. is just, that's how they really make their money, by these giant fucking corporations buying their fucking thing. It's not about how much profit they're making. They don't give a fuck. It's about, are these giant investment firms that are being ran through with Fed money taking over and buying your stock? That's all matters. So that's all bullshit, too. So there's no reason not to bring back fucking manufacturing to America. Suck a dick. Anyway, <laughs> I want to get into because I can't keep you guys forever. Uh, Kenneth, we got in Terrence. Do you, is there anything more about Terrence? Because I feel like that's a big issue for you, and I really love that you've been keeping his name out there. Can you tell us a little bit about um, a little bit more about his story? Uh, Terrence, uh, yeah, he was, uh, like I said before, one of the first responders. He showed up to rescue people um, you know, within minutes of the, the bombing going off. He showed up, saved uh, upwards of three lives. Uh, he ended up injuring himself. He fell through like a floor or two, uh, you know, trying to carry a heftier fella. Uh, injured himself, ended up in the hospital. His ex-wife at the time, Tanya Yiki, picked him up from the hospital that night. One of the first things he said to her was, Tanya, it's not what they're telling you. Uh, this is, or telling us, or you, I forget the specifics, uh, the exact quote, but something along those lines. Uh, he had tears in his eyes, according to Tanya. He was very upset and wanted to get the hell out of there. He never really told her a ton about specifics of what he saw, but there were people that he did talk to, uh, people like, uh, there was an individual named Ramona McDonald who, uh, was uh, there was a letter from uh, Terrence to her uh, that he kind of goes into it seems he thinks at the very least that the it was at the at the very least some sort of sting operation that went wrong it seems to be he's implying that from the letter to Ramona Ramona's also was used as a source later on in the CNN article that just came out uh, I think like a few months ago they used her so you have the letter and that uh, she is like kind of like an anonymous sort of source she's using like a pseudonym so uh, I mean, you know, you know, put that into your you know calculations how much you want to trust it. But I believe the letter was originated from the family. They found it and gave it to him. So I don't know I think it's legit. But uh, yes, yeah, so there's that. He he seemed to be. Um, he seemed to have seen something. Uh, you know, it's hard to say exactly what he saw. He uh, at one point said to his sister, LaShawn Hargrove, something along the lines of that he saw something that looked like uh, perhaps that it had exploded, that saw evidence of what looked like an outward explosion as opposed to an inward explosion. Uh, you know, I don't have specifics on what exactly he saw in regards to that. Um, so in another point to keep in mind too is during the rescue operations there was a multiple times where they stopped the search for bomb scares for additional bombs. Now we never really got an official narrative on what exactly it is, but the more semi-official sources it seems to be that they've settled on like the more reputable sources is that the ATF was improperly storing uh, munitions in the Murrah building, uh, which they shouldn't be because there was a daycare there, there was like a social security office, a oh bunch of old people, like, a lot of civilians. <laughs> but this is on the lesser end, so uh, uh, on what it could have been. It could have been that they had munitions there. So now, obviously, now that, le now that leaves two options open. Either those were unexploded ordinances or they actually did explode, and maybe that could account for some of the damage that we're seeing. But obviously, then they wouldn't admit to it because then now that would make them, that would put them at, uh, make them culpable. 
but you know, so on the less end, it's unexploded ordinances that they had to call off. Even that's bad enough, even if they didn't explode because they were improperly storing it. And as a result, there may have been people who legitimately died because they had to stop rescue operations um, for you know a period of time while they dealt with it. Uh, on the other end, now in the other end, the other extreme of the possibilities of what that could have been, those could have been those planted possible explosions we talked about earlier. The two individuals uh, claimed they saw something right. that looked like that was going on. So, you know, there there's a realm of possibilities. There also is, there are some researchers who seem to believe somehow he may have got a hold of the surveillance tapes. I don't know how legit that is, but that is another key point with Oklahoma City bombing is the, the surveillance tapes, just, pff, gone. There was over surprise, uh, 20 surprise. surveillance tapes. Yeah, Through FOIAs, we have found out there were, and, and other sources, we found out that there were over 20, I believe it was either two or three that they said had evidentiary basis, which means they would show the bombing itself and the individuals. So, you know, so between 20 and that we have at least probably, you know, a few that would be very useful. Uh, and those would be almost certainly show, uh, you know, on the, on the lighter end, once again, that would, the, the, you know, it's almost certain it would show a second person getting out of that truck with Timothy McVeigh. But on the other hand, that also could show, uh, you know, simultaneous or maybe an explosion happening before or after, if we're going to go with planted explosives, that those surveillance tapes would have shown that. Yeah. Um, so those FOIAs, they've been, they or those FOIAs, but those, uh, those surveillance tapes, they've been hiding forever, coming with every excuse they can. There's an individual named Kenneth, or not Kenneth, but Jesse trying to do, whose brother died, uh, also as, as another suicide, uh, quote unquote. And he's been fighting for decades now, uh, for bro- Justice and his brother's, uh, case. And it, a lot of people think that they may have killed him in pursuit of John Doe too. Uh, the FBI kind of, you know, trying to hush hush things, but, Anyways, the point being as to how this connects is, uh, you know, he's one of the major things that uh, Jesse has been pushing for decades now is uh, going through FOIA lawsuits, so freedom of information uh, requests. And he's been uh, the main thing he's been pushing is the uh, the uh, security uh, surveillance the surveillance videos he's been trying to get and they've been dragging their feet uh, basically giving almost nothing but he's been getting we've got a ton of information from uh, Jesse trying to do his stuff but it's more like kind of uh, reluctantly he's kind of slowly sucked out information you know different documents and stuff he also another thing he's working on too is uh and he's actually currently under a gag order so as soon as that comes out that would be a great guess for one of you guys is Jesse trying to do but he's currently under a gag order because he had one individual named John Matthews, who was a PatCon operative uh, whistleblower for the FBI, which was a uh, operation going around in the early 90s. Uh, many people s- are suspicious that it connects to the Oklahoma City bombing because, uh, for one, John Matthews saw uh, M- M- McVeigh and uh, you know Strassmeyer, the other individual we haven't quite talked on. But we probably should try to hit on him before we get out of here because I think he's a key point that ties in a lot of stuff we've talked about. But, you know, he's, he essentially this PatCon operation seems to tie into that, and uh, when he, you know, he teamed up with Jesse uh, to try to, you know, help him with his whole court stuff, and the FBI threatened him to, because he was a veteran, and essentially said, hey, you're going to end up like another homeless veteran if you keep going after this. Uh, Jesse, uh, you know, brought this to the judge, brought this allegation, and because of it, the judge has been taking it seriously. I guess he put gag orders on both parties, and they're still trying to parse that out. Uh, everyone I've talked to inv- involved with that case, or, or that knows anything about the case seems pretty hopeful uh, apparently this judge has been pretty helpful fighting against the feds for a lot of stuff for years uh, now so we think it'll probably rule in his favor so hopefully here soon we might have a big treasure trove of FOIA stuff that comes out uh, we'll see but uh, point being is how this all interconnects and I you know I kind of breezed over Kenneth you know Jesse's brother the one who got suicided thinking he was John Doe too uh, we can go into that you want wow. I wrote a piece on him uh, you know on my sub stack so if people want to check that out I, it also was uh, published in uh, Garrison in the uh, Journal of Deep History and Politics, or P- History and Deep Politics. I said that wrong. But uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> a lot there. There is a lot, dude. Yeah. It's so crazy. The whole thing is nuts. We see all this stuff. We see like uh, John Doe, every every major fucking event that's happened since there, except for maybe 9-11, we can get into, we, I bet you if we search hard enough, we'll find a, a John Doe type. But uh, all these shootings, right? All these shootings, witnesses see another another guy, uh, uh, 
Columbine. I mean, we see film of a guy running. We see pictures of somebody arrested. No discussion about that. In the and this is kind of you and I have talked about this a bunch of times about you know in the in the uh, in the not the Parkland shooting. The teacher goes on ABC, and this is I got into the uh, I I had to I had to really like pull back on a discussion with Joe Rogan about this because he got very you know. He got, uh, he was got started getting emotional about it, let's just say. And he was, you know, I was telling him, it's like this nonlinear warfare shit that goes on as well. Like ABC allows this teacher to come on and say she saw a cop in heavy armor shooting children. Yeah. And you're like, that gets on ABC. Like you and I both know How did that like happen? every moment of every second on television is micromanaged. Yeah. That thing didn't just, well, uh, well. Who let that get by in the 18 different people that had to study this thing to allow it to get the television? Yeah. That's all done on purpose. But here we are again, seeing another person that nobody wants to account for. And in the Vegas shooting, like, dude, you'd study the round shot. You can't, one guy can't shoot that much. Yeah. They just can't. There's multiple it, shooters. It seems like they do obvious things like that just to get you to talk about it. Yeah, here we are talking about yeah. it. And you're not talking about the thing they really don't want you to talk about, like this other shit. Like you guys have no idea why we did all that, but you got you, you, you throw in some you know crazy shit that doesn't make sense, like that teacher on ABC going, "Yeah, I saw I opened the door and then I saw uh, th this man in full body armor with a gun, like some weird looking gun that I've never seen." Meanwhile, before. the kid that got blamed for it didn't have body armor. Yeah, like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, or that hot, that that chick was like, yeah, I, he wasn't shooting. I was running with him when I uh, when I heard the shooting. Yeah, and everyone's like, yeah, you bad guy. And the kid's obviously partially like slow. He went to this ex, uh, this very um, controversial uh, school program. That again, this is where we get into the MK Ultra and all that shit. And then that guy Hog is a like David Hog. He's there. <laughs> yeah. He gets on his bike or something. Remember that and he does. He does. He talks about he. He's actually they. They have the video of him. Uh, fuck. What's it closet. called? He's in the closet. Yeah, he's in the something. closet, but in the he's, classroom. What does he do though? He sets the stage. What's it called? The uh, time stamps it or why? There's this. There's a. There's oh, a term for it in Hollywood. He where he slates it. He slates it. He's like. February, February, whatever day it was, February 10th at 10.30 at blah, blah, blah. You're like, what, you're slating this? Because he'd gone to CNN's, yeah. like, summer school. Yeah. And then they went, the time he says is, like, two hours before the shooting supposedly happens. So they have been they were running a drill earlier. Then he's on another ABC or NBC show going, yeah, I was at my house, and we were, I heard about the shooting, so I got on my bike, and I yeah. just rode over there to, to, to document the whole thing. You're like, okay, why did you say that? And why did that get to the fucking, why did that get to the final product? Yeah. Because now they have a spokesperson for fucking. No, but it gets you to fuck, now we're talking about it. Yeah. Now yeah, Instead now of talking about what they don't want us to talk about. Right. Yeah. You know, on the uh, MK Ultra thing, I, I just remembered we were talking about McVeigh earlier, uh, and and on M MK Ultra, uh, Jolly West, uh, you know, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with that name, and uh, you may not be familiar with this name, but Jolly West protege John Smith, Doctor John Smith, another MK Ultra uh, scientist, doctor, whatever you want to call him, uh, they were both, uh, in, you know, involved in this uh, whole grand uh, story. Um, oh, hold on. Uh, oh, yeah, he was involved in this too. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, now, it, it, the recent information has come out from Dr. Wendy Painting. Uh, I don't re recall the specifics, but according to her, uh, you know, and I trust her, but people go look into this. Uh, it, it, he, if you've had, I think you had pro, uh, uh, Fallen Gong, that guy on, uh, you know, Program Chill before, I believe. Uh, she did a series on his show, and she, I think she went to that. I don't remember if she gave specifics, but either way, uh, she, I'm sure there'll be something that comes out in a later book, and she'll give the sources on that. But according to her, um, he actually did Jolly uh, Jolly West actually did meet with Timothy McVeigh. Um, now, before this information came out recently, we knew that John Smith, the the protege of him, had met with him, but we didn't know that he had that McVeigh had met with Jolly West. But even then, prior before that, so even before this Wendy Penning information, we knew. That
that Jolly West was involved, and he was working with uh, the victims, the the trauma victims, uh, you know, the, the helping them out. Essentially, that was the story uh, or whatever. Which is obviously anyone who understands MK Ultra and what the goal is is essentially to manipulate trauma. It seems obviously very uh, weird that some individual shows up when a large trauma event happens to talk to these individuals who experience a lot of trauma. Uh, so I, mean, I don't know, you know, go with that wherever you want. Obviously, we don't know the specifics of what they talk. To, uh, talked about what happened, but it is very suggestive. I mean, this guy shows up uh, anytime there's some huge, uh, you know, government. Uh, Did he meet with them before like or after? This was after. Okay. I mean, I'm sure, I wouldn't be surprised if we met with him after. I'm talking about like in the period of time after he's already been detained and yes. uh, you know, stuff like that. So That's for that me. period. Now, if he did it before, it wouldn't surprise me at all either. But <laughs> so. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, that's all I have on that. <laughs> no, it's like it's insane, dude. What else did we? Is there anything else we didn't cover? Uh, Strassmeyer would probably be the big thing I'd want to cover because right, it really ties it. into the stuff we've talked about today. Now, Strassmeyer, Andreas Strassmeyer, he was a German national, you know, dude from Germany. Uh, he did some time in the German military. He was in counter uh, counterintelligence there. Uh, he also, for a period of time, it looked like it looked to me like kind of like a cross training thing, uh, where he did uh, kind of work patrol with the IDF for a little while, Israeli Defense Force. So you know, that kind of just kind of tells you know where a he's German from, worked with Israelis. Yeah, I mean, this is in the, the what late '80s, probably. Oh, so yeah, I don't know. You know, the, the relations weren't so bad then. Uh, but uh, yeah, he yeah he this guy is actually fluent in English, fluent in German, fluent in uh, Hebrew as well. So this is the kind of guy we're talking about. You know, and he's also the son of like a high powered pol politician over there in Germany at the time. Um, and this guy, um, you know, after all that over there in Germany, he decides to come over to the United States. Uh, and the first person he lives with is this individual named Vincent Petrusky. And now Vincent Petrusky, it seems to be, he was an ex-CIA operative who was involved in Operation Phoenix, which is something I was telling you about earlier, which is kind of ties into Gladio, ties into, uh, ties into like Northwoods. It's kind of that vein. Essentially, Operation Phoenix was this operation that was going on around the Vietnam War time where we had, you know, spook type operations going on over in Vietnam where they were, uh, essentially doing false flag type attacks, uh, things like, you know, assassinations, bombings, uh, shootings, whatever, stuff that would obviously, the whole point being was to drive the uh, Viet uh, Vietnamese people into the arms of the security state, which, you know, essentially was us at that period of time, uh, and drove them away from the Viet Cong and stuff like that. So that was going on. This Vincent Petrusky seems to be, he may have been involved in that, and he had made comments before about how he'd kind of like to get the gang back together, something along those oh, lines, geez. essentially start this up over over here, something along those lines, um, you know, so I don't know, read into that what you want to, um, and, you know, he, while he's with Vincent Petrusky, there are some statements where it seems that Vincent was trying to help uh, Andreas get a job, put in different packages to different, uh, different intelligence agencies, stuff like that. Uh, apparently, I guess Vincent Petrusky was waiting, uh, I forget if it was Reagan or who it is, but he apparently was buddies with some, uh, some uh, or had connections to some uh, one of the presidential hopefuls, and if they got in, he was supposed to get some big job, and uh, that seemed to fall through, or did it? Um, and, um, you know, the, so anyways, uh, uh, Strassmeyer leaves uh, Petrusky, and he moves to Texas, and he goes and lives with another CIA uh, uh, officer, uh, Dave Holloway. And now this individual was also a, at one point a pilot for uh, essentially a cutout of Evergreen, which anyone who's Evergreen is, that's a CIA you know, front company. Um, and so this guy, uh, he had Strassmeyer living with him. And at this time, Holloway had uh, kind of founded a or started up a, uh, an, a militia called Texas Light Infantry, and he brought Strassmeyer in with the full with him type deal. Uh, Strassmeyer ended up there. During this period of time, too, Strassmeyer is also receiving $2,000 a month from Holloway. I believe, if I remember correctly, it was under the guise of some computer job or some nonsense. Obviously, he wasn't doing this. But... He ends up in this militia with Holloway, and he actually, Strassmeyer gets kicked out of this militia for being a suspected provocateur because oh, some of the yeah. individuals in the uh, militia followed him, uh, I guess, one night, and they saw him trying to go, or actually going into a federal building and using the keypad to get in. And at that point, they're like, you can get the hell out. Um, oh, snaps, and then, bro. <laughs> and, and, and I do want to say at this Texas Light Infantry, this is the first time uh, that we, uh, you know, have what seems to be reported 
reporting of McVeigh and uh, Strassmeyer meeting up. Isn't during this Texas Light Infantry oh. period that John Matthews individual, the Pat Gone guy I told you about earlier, he had, he said he saw them together at the during that period of time over the Texas Light Infantry. But anyways, then from there, Strassmeyer goes to Elohim City once he's kicked out of Texas Light Infantry, and Elohim City is uh, you know a very anyone who's looked into OKC pretty deeply you know has probably heard of Elohim City. It's kind of like a a uh, little ragtag group of white supremacists, militia types, religious kooks, but generally kind of like a white power. I mean, it's, it's filled to the brim with feds. Like, let's be real. But uh, Strassmeyer <laughs> gets there. Uh, he immediately takes over, uh, or maybe not immediately, but he, he ends up, you know, essentially self-appointing himself as a security director there. I guess he makes a big point to upgrade the weaponry, and I believe some of them were illegal weaponry. So that says something. He also was... Uh, supposedly uh, pushing individuals in these groups to be more aggressive. He was pushing things like uh, assassinations, bombing, shooting, stuff like this. Um, and, you know, and this, this was also, this was corroborated by Carol Howe, which she was an ATF informant that got planted in there. And she claimed uh, that she actually went with Dennis Mahon, who was a white supremacist figure, and uh, Andrea Strassmeyer, and they, uh, they scouted the uh, Murrah building three times, those, those individuals, uh, you know, obviously trying to scout it for, you know, kind of perspective bombing. Um, so there's that. Um, and, and this is Elohim City. Uh, this is another place where they you know, McVeigh and him are rumored to have met up. Um, you know, during this period of time is the, the only time that Strassmeyer admits to have met, uh, McVeigh and they met at a gun show there. And at that, according to their official story or their story is at there, they kind of just met up, struck some conversation. Uh, he make, or McVeigh sold to Strassmeyer his, uh, his BDUs from Desert Storm that has name tag and everything. And we know this because one of the times he got interviewed, it was literally hanging up in, in Strassmeyer's closet. You could see the name tag McVeigh. Um, so that's weird. And also during that period of time, Strassmeyer gave, uh, McVeigh a business card or not, I guess maybe, I guess you could call it a business card for Elohim city so he could reach him. Uh, cause it's not just some place you just show up at, you know? Um, and you know, th- and that is his explanation for how later he got called because, uh, you know, it seems to be the reason why he copped up to the one time meeting McVeigh is because they looked at their phone records and at one point McVeigh called over to him. Uh, so they, and they had to come up with a reason why they talked, but you know, there were SPLC informants who, an, an informant that claimed that he saw McVeigh at Elohim city 15 to 20 times. Jeez. So, you know, there's placing a more Elohim city with these individuals, uh, there, there's more to tie it in, but I mean, I think I've made the point that McVeigh and him were uh, tied in together. Yeah, sure. uh, the Strathmore individual, I've kind of given his connections to uh, to uh, kind of some of the um, the CIA figures, uh, and you know, kind of knew why we talked about Operation, uh, you know, Phoenix, kind of how that ties into it. So, and then also the big thing with him is whenever all this stuff went down is shortly after he disappeared, he left the country, he went back to Germany, and he was essentially escorted by this Holloway figure. Uh, and during the, that period of time, too, he also got a kind of like a going away interview. Uh, I forget the name of the, the journalist off the top of my head, but uh, this was another guy who was, you know, looked like he was a past CIA operative, and it was just kind of like a fluff piece to kind of like, oh, how he had nothing to do with this type deal. And then he ended up back over in Germany, and that's kind of where we are. <laughs> So, I mean, that guy obviously tells the story. Oh, one last thing about him that's kind of important is uh, um, the individuals planting the explosives uh, or what seemed to be could have been explosives earlier. Um, the big, a lot of people think Strassmeyer was one of him because at one point, one of those individuals, I forget which one of the ladies it was that said it. I want to say it was Ruth Graham, but I forget. But she went on the Alex Jones program and she claimed to have, uh, that it was Strassmeyer. One of the people she saw was Strassmeyer. And that is the only time her story ever changed. So a lot of people don't put a ton of credence in that. So I'm just being honest with that. I mean, maybe, I don't know, maybe she thought about it more, really looked at the face and was like, yeah, that is him. I have no idea. But a lot of people uh, kind of discount counter story for that reason because that's the only time it changes when she went on the alex jones story and as you guys went on earlier a lot of people like to you know theorize maybe it's controlled opposition or something i i don't know so 
Either way, uh, the guy's enough of a shady figure, and he uh, clearly had a lot to do with the bombing. Uh, there were reports of him being there at like planning phases in you know meetings at Elohim City, along, among other people. Uh, he's definitely one of the probably the the figures that glow the most. There's another individual, Roger Moore, but we don't really have to go into him too much. He's another individual that glows like the sun. Uh, I mean, we've only covered probably like a less than a quarter of the stuff here. There's uh, so much of this, but you know that that definitely Strassmeyer ties into our larger kind of narrative of like. Uh, uh, you know how these how this works possibly or if they did it themselves kind of like uh, how, how we see the blueprints for that i mean do you remember going there sam yeah and, and we had the the native american yeah Native showing american us showing us around and we were kind of she didn't know we were there kind of not believing the story yeah <laughs> it, was it, was a little, it was weird i want to end on this i, I want to get in I, I i i would love to on the next one talk about all this like remote viewing stuff but i want to kind of just end it on james corbett he had a whole thing on this and i want to focus on the end and where like nobody got to witness uh uh timothy mcveigh's execution when did that happen what when did he get executed i don't know let me see Pretty sure they the the people saw it on CCTV. If I remember correctly, Maybe according to him, nobody got to watch it. They know <laughs> they didn't get to see when he left. Well, they they the Hertz had no license plates on it that took his body. It's like it's all so shady. Up I mean, I know the death. Yeah, one weird thing a lot of people point to is uh, he made claims that he thought that he was going to somehow get out of there at some point to multiple people that they were going to not kill him. Uh, personally, I think he did die, <laughs> but I do think he may have believed he wasn't going to. <laughs> I think maybe someone did sweet whisper sweet nothings into his ear, but there is definitely weird stuff there. There, uh, I, I did find out recently that I guess uh, he made a point to that he wanted him himself to be. Um, God, I'm having such a brain fart. What's it called when they burn your body? Cremated. Um, cremated. Yeah, cremated. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to be cremated, and he wanted no one to know where it was. June <laughs> where 2001. His ashes were. <laughs> 33 so, years old. Damn. Yeah, I mean, I personally think he died, but, uh, you know, I don't know. The, it, there is definitely, it's it's an interesting little, you know, head scratch, I guess, to think about that. Injection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a crazy-ass yeah. video, but basically at the end is that he didn't, he, like, the death was super shady. The yeah. death was super shady. Well, I, mean, I think it's a loose end you get rid of, but <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, I'm with you, dude. I'm with you. Well, Jose, great episode, great job. One more time, tell us where they can find you. Yeah, uh, if you like my offensive comedy, Tower Gang, you can. That's on YouTube. All major podcasters, Odyssey as well. We're also have Rumble, Rumble on that one, uh, and then I'll have my No Way Jose show, which is my more serious content, more you know conspiracy, libertarianism, anarchism, uh, stuff like that. If that's stuff you're into, I've done a lot of you know, multi, few hundred episodes at this point, so you know check out my playlist, whatever. There might be something in there that catches your uh, catch your eye. Probably the thing I'm best known for is this OKC series. I highly recommend it. It's been lauded by a lot of people. Uh, like I said, that's mostly due to my expert, Richard Boo, so all credit to him. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the No Way Jose show, YouTube, all major artboxes are Jose as well. If you want to follow me on Twitter, at Tower Gang Jose, this has been great. And if there's anyone out there, I guess I'll, since this is a larger platform, if anyone has any information or knows anyone that was has anything to do with any of these individuals or was there the day of, I'm always looking for, you know, people to talk to because you never know who's going to hear this and who knows something or whatever uh you know like that steven vassar interview i had i literally just found him on facebook because i saw he was a source recently used in a uh in a uh that hadn't been used before in an article so i you know if there's anyone out there that knows anyone that you know uh knows anything or anything like that or pertinent to the story let me know uh, i'm looking uh, to break any of that type of stuff it's funny, uh, even wikipedia says that they fast-tracked his ass to the Yep. Injection. That's, yeah, injection. I mean, even Wikipedia acknowledges like, hey, they were really hurt. Yeah, yeah. No, let's go wrap they, it up here. Eddie, I think one they more. renovated the death penalty laws, if I recall correctly, for him. Yeah, uh, Eddie, we got a big gig this Saturday night in in Torrance at the end of the at the end of the South Bay. Two shows, but for one ticket, you're gonna get stand up comedy. Then you get a little Q and A with us. Then, of course, we also have. Our August 12th, we have more gigs hopefully coming, but August 12th, we're going to be at Broad Brook, and we're going to be at the Opera House there in Connecticut. Tickets will be on samtriplee.com. Anything else you want to push? Uh, not really. 
All right, dude. <laughs> Always a pleasure to speak with you. Guys, stay tuned. You get a little uh, sneak peek. Tim Fall, we get a sneak peek from Broken Sim, Cash Daddies. We wanted to do this one, but he never sends it in. But if he ever sends in a clip. Send some new ones. He, okay. You guys send, got tired of my shit? No, okay, no <laughs> send uh, some the, new ones. No, there's new ones. I got you Okay, guys. send some new ones. And then you'll uh, hear a little bit, uh, some sneak, not some sneak peeks, but some highlights. And then you'll hear about our affiliate programs. They're available on Sam Triple E. Dot com. So enjoy these. Thank you for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed the show, and we will talk to you soon. Enjoy the highlights. Here's a clip from the latest Broken Sim. Speaking of lizard people, we meant to talk about this earlier, but we there's a certain family that whenever we bring it up yes. on tinfoil hat, yes, everything digital in our lives we will goes, not say their names yeah. ever again <laughs> goes haywire so we even talked about with mel k we go oh you remember last time you were on yeah. and all the, everybody just fucked with us you remember those funny times yeah. that was so funny right crazy never happened again bam next week bang everyone's coming for us we've never had more trouble with the feed with the editing i mean my gear was just was fritzing out it, to the lizard people that listen to the show we will no longer talk about that family you win. You win. I mean, that was when Amazon Web Services was having all these problems with delivering podcasts. It seems like ours, especially, people had especially a lot of problems with uh, Johnny. We're getting the shows. So can we end the show on a final thing? Oh, no, we haven't done any news. What are you talking about? Oh, sh Johnny. We're at 2.15. We got 15 2.15. That's a lot. We're gonna get, we haven't done any news stories. All right. Okay. okay. Your, Fox your, News. Your freaking news stories. Uh, did you see this? Fox News has sent Tucker Carlson cease and desist letters yeah. over his new Twitter show. He should just keep going. Fox News has sent a cease and desist letter to Tucker Carlson alleging that the conservative network's former star anchor breached his contract by launching a new Twitter show, according to a source familiar with the matter. By the way, he's just, it's a guy talking in his basement. It's so ridiculous. It's not right? a primetime news show. So because he because he's supposed to be off air for at least a year, I think. I think it's or 2024. Two. He's supposed to be silent until after the 2024 election. Isn't so, that funny? So until do you know, Johnny, what happens is like these, these uh, reality stars, they all get fucked by these deals because... What happens is they do these reality shows and then they sign a, a deal where they can't do another show for a year after that. And by the time that year's done, everyone's forgotten about no them yeah. and nobody cares. No so this is kind of what they do. It's super interesting. I wonder if this was part of his negotiations with Twitter. They were like, hey, dude, if I get sued, you guys got to kind of backstop me here. Because, I mean, they could ruin Tucker. If, what, if do they you have think a really hundred million dollars is a lot to... to uh, Tucker? No, to... To. Elon? Yeah. No. Yeah, no. I would do it. No. I'd be like, let's go, bro. I think he let's probably go. did. Because if you notice now, anytime Tucker posts a video, Elon will comment on it like, damn, this is serious or something like that. What? Let's just say, bro, let's just say that Rogan doesn't re-sign with Spotify. I think he will. I mean, they'd be stupid to let him go. Twitter? Let's say. I mean, Elon, what do you got to say? Here's a bill, bro. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. That'd be huge for Twitter. That'd be huge. And I, I to this day, I think Joe needs to have a corporation behind him, a point of entry. That's yeah. just my well, opinion. Also, somebody to just take the blows, you know, like from the outside, like to kind of. Uh, Joe is a big defend. fish, but in the, the, the masters of mankind, he needs a bigger fish. Absolutely. Right? Uh, here's a poll. This is from USA Today. Yeah, I got to go. And this, to me, is the reaction. We're finally starting to see the reaction of the left agenda among people in the general public. Americans are less supportive of transgender athlete participation in single gender sports than they were two years ago, a national survey found. Even more people say now that they know someone who is transgender, yet they don't support transgender athletes picking so so well, are you talking about this interview that this guy did on the no, hill it's a gallup poll yeah yeah so if you go find the hill they actually interviewed the guy who what guy? who is like the, in charge of the gallup poll if you listen okay. to him the, well i mean i don't the, but, the, but the, the reason i'm telling you this is because after this came out this guy went on the hill and he kind of was like giving his interpretation of it what trying to slant it or yeah 100 percent and it was so insane how he was slanting it to basically be like, Is yeah, this well, it, right? most Americans think changing ones. No, no, that's, yeah. that can't be it. That's, no, it might, I think no. that might be it. Well, no, it does say two days ago. Okay, maybe. 
In a new Gallup poll, 69% well, of like Americans say athlete. transgender athletes should only be able to play Betsy, on the go, teams go that match the their birth gender. On well, the this gotta, is reportedly a seven-point shift toward that position since 2021. The point is, it, it, it's, it's getting well, worse. But, but we got to explain the story first. I didn't get to finish reading. It's getting worse. It used to be more people were actually supportive, and yeah. now less are. And the reason they're surprised by this is because more people than ever say they know somebody who's trans. And this is the result of all the bullshit that yeah, they've been trying 100%. to do. It's backfiring. It's and blowback. I, I know there's people in Hollywood that see my tweets and get upset with me about, and they think I'm anti-trans. I'm not at all. I don't. But, dude, it's like you guys have no clue the difference between the the gay movement, which started early, and, in my opinion, queer theory. Yeah. They're blowing it. They're no, Well, but they're meant to blow it. This is it. This is meant to be. If you but, I mean, they're blowing their chance to convince people by the, the tactics. Was at 62% then. This shift was also seen among right, Democrats with 41%. Yeah, that's him. That's the guy. Based on the, you know, reading the guy, your you poll go results. Back, go back. I, where they introduce to morality versus fairness and participation in sports, there is definitely um, a divide, even amongst people who are left of center, on whether or not that should be that taking place. People I have seen, I think, more he criticism from everything. conservatives of uh, it's Pride Month of kind of just the LGBT category um, this year than I can recall in previous years. I think there had been a sense that the right, except for very ardent religious conservatives, had largely given up on relitigating gay marriage, um, things of that nature, you know, except when it is still going to fight the cake baking case where it really clashes with um, freedom of religion and freedom of expression, maybe. But uh, the, those issues were settled and won, and, you know, most Americans, even a lot of Americans on the right, agreed with that. Um, Based on the, you know reading your poll results, I, my perception would be that the trans category and and the sort of the the disinterested, including them in sports that even many Democrats have, is is that like dragging down the the entire LGBT category, you know, back toward. Um, levels of non-acceptance that were, you know, have last witnessed back in the in the aughts. We don't see that in the numbers. So um, okay. whether or not people are accepting of um, gay marriage, for example, is something we've been asking about for decades. Right now, um, seven in ten Americans support. Um, view of being homosexual as morally acceptable, and even larger percentages support gay marriage. And we've seen huge shifts most over just the past 30 years. Most people don't care about gay marriage. So, uh, most you know, people, as, like, again, going back to it, who you stop know. Stop it. Listen, I know there's going to be backlash on this, okay? Gays did not kill marriage. The courts and the government killed marriage by making it one-sided. Yeah. That's why. Okay, there's a reason why 70% of marriages are ended by the women because they're favorable to them in court in every single way. Child custody, divorce, because courts look at women like it's the 1950s and they aren't allowed to have any jobs or anything like that. It's That's also back then, especially oh, we're going to lose it again with the women. A lot, and when a lot of these laws were made, though, people weren't living as long either. Now guys are having to support women that they divorced when they were 45 for 30, 40 years. Dude, if you're in California, I would not stay married over 10 years. It sucks. And here's a quick sneak peek of Conspiracy Social Club. Enjoy. Stop getting your news from TikTok. <laughs> and stop getting your news from I hate Bill Clinton.com. Brian. And stop getting your news Brian. from YouTube. I'm begging you to stop with YouTube. I love you so much. I am much, begging Brian. you to read a book. I'm so I'm thankful you that you read, are like, some blissfully journalists. ignorant look at my, and look do at, not Look at my read. eyes are closed. I'm eyes exhausted. Are closed. <laughs> because he, because I'm begging him. And I'm 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 begging him with all my Jesus Christ energy. <laughs> Cuz I love him. But I want him to be educated. Yeah, Brian. He's not. But he has full he's full of opinion. <laughs> Al Amarie. Now listen, Sam. You'd have to so pay Brian, these assassins. Brian, what you're Where talking does that about money? read anything either. 
Huh? What? We, we pushed. We pitched so many books. To I, you. you don't read anything. Well, I read don't read anything because I read the Pale Horse. It's the worst book of all time. Brian, you are. Hold I'm embarrassed for you. It's the worst. I'm embarrassed for you. And that guy was crazy. No, you're crazy. And in fact, Brian. went into a schizophrenic rage and got shot by the cop. Oh, oh, so it's his <laughs> fault now. Well, when you read this book, you go, "Oh, you're crazy." And it's not even written like a good movie. It's like, oh, the, guy, the captain got super mad when I even mentioned that a UFO came out of the sea. He, his face got red. The veins in his neck. Oh, God. The oh, captain Brian. had a reason this to keep that secret. So hot garbage. You're he had so a reason. I command the ship, and you will not talk about this again. <laughs> yes, a UFO came out of the sea. Nothing to see here. I tell you, I'll court martial you. You better not write a book. You're just ridiculous. Damn it, he wrote a book. We have to kill him I, now. I, I can't Let's go make it look like an accident. He knows too much. We'll have to buy up all the books. Hold up, Brian, See? Brian, 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 Brian. You know he was assassinated by the government, right? You know that, right? Um, of course. That's after, a, he, after, Brian, he wrote, Brian, after he wrote that book about a Brian, giant UFO coming Brian. out of the sea, we're going to be sunk, I tell you. We'll be sunk. Someone go kill him. Send the local Brian, law enforcement. Brian, he literally was shot in the back by the government. Send the local law enforcement Brian, he there. was shot in the back by the yes. government. Yes. He was well, literally shot in the back by the government. We'll have an assassin go through the tree police training program in that local municipality. Brian, tell me how the... And then, Brian, Brian, real quick, yeah. I want to hear your lifetime channel for retarded women's <laughs> version, okay, of, of what happened with the Branch Davidian. Can I hear that story for you? Like, Get into it. I want to hear what happened there the from branch, Brian Callen's point FBI of view. The FBI and Ruby Ridge and, and Waco clearly behaved in a... In a the, I think it was alcohol, tobacco, and firearms, ATF... Uh, I, I think, um, and FBI, they, they did a terrible job. Okay. And they, they should be. Now, Brian, they do should you be think, Brian, when and you say they did a terrible job, yeah. do you think that it just didn't go the way they wanted it to and it just got out of hand? Yes. It was a bunch of macho guys who said, oh, we have, this, this guy's got young, so Brian, underage girls there and he's, and they're oh, dealing with oh, weapons oh. and they're dealing with like, you know, weapons. They, 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 they're amassing weapons Okay, and they geared up and they go, this is our chance to okay. go be, and they, and instead of going in there doing it the right way, they went in there guns blazing. Oh, okay. And so Brian, let me happened. ask you something. Yeah. A kind hearted human being like yourself, yeah. right? Let's say as a kind hearted human being like yourself. Okay. Yeah. If, uh, if a situation happens where a bunch of people died yeah. because the plan didn't get executed the way you had hoped, fingers crossed, yeah. that it worked out that way. Right. Do you think, Brian, after it when everything, the, 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 the fire is still simmering, do you think you would take pictures of yourself in front of said accident where people in particularly children had died do you think you would take pictures of this incredibly horrible moment where you and your friends <laughs> plans went so awry that it just didn't work out and people unfortunately died do you think you would take pictures of yourself in front of that no I okay because they did the atf and the fbi i understand but they've, they've gotten a lot of shit for that because they were they behaved yeah but brian what you but, but brian what, what you don't understand, Brian, is your common theme with you on here on episode zero of Conspiracy Social Club, okay, yeah. is that you always think the plan just didn't work out, unfortunately, but somehow the people who made the plan that didn't work out get all the money and get all the power. How'd That's they, what you how think. How they get all the money and power with Waco? Waco embarrassed the FBI and the ATF. The Waco didn't embarrass them. It went exactly the way they wanted to. They sent a fucking message to everybody. Of it is fuck around and find out. That's what the message was to everybody. Fuck around and find well, I, out. I would agree with that. I would agree with there are people in the FBI who said let's teach these Branch Davidians. The a Branch Davidian people tried to be like, hey man, I agree. Let's just fucking we'll come out. I, I nope. Agree. But isn't Fuck that, around, find out. Yeah, but Sam, isn't, that is not that uncommon to have a bunch of dudes with testosterone, Velcro, and guns. So, Brian, but the this question is, is this. If you war. think that Janet Reno, if you think he could, okay, allow this to happen where many people died, right? And, 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 and what almost you're saying is this was almost planned. If you're sitting there saying that, but you can't think that the Clintons, who are at the, almost at the highest level of power, 
couldn't kill off 60 people that have information that could lead to them getting think, in trouble? I think Waco, and you can see it on tape, Waco was these, these guys come in, just like they did with Ruby Ridge. They're crawling in, armed to the teeth. They surround the place. We're going to go ambush. And the guy goes, I have a right to defend myself. He sees these guys coming in. He's like, fuck this. He shoots back, kills one of the guys. Kills one of the, kills one of the FBI guys or ATF guys. Okay. Boom. All hell breaks loose. Now they board up. Yeah. Fuck you. And now there's, there's a standoff. Now guess what? Yeah. The ATF is armed to the teeth and they're like, oh yeah? All right, now we're going in. We're yeah. going to war. And what happened? That's what you believe what too, Dylan. Yeah, but that is great. what happened. You know that what happened? sounds great. You know what happened with Ruby Ridge? Yeah, Brian, tell they, me about they, Ruby they, Ridge. They, 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 they... All right, guys, real quick before we're done, we want to tell you about all of our affiliates. It's a great way to support the show. Uh, as you know, uh, fiat money is chaos. Okay, fractional reserve banking, dangerous. The best way to get out of it is precious metals in particular silver and gold silver and gold and that's why we're working at wise wolf okay wise wolf silver and gold just go to sam triple or sam triple gold and you could join and uh the, he's hooking you up they got great pro that you can either buy a single time or you can sign up for the program where you can buy up to 500 dollars a month i'm doing it i hope you can too we also have Everybody at Eagle Research, that's right, Eagle Research, AquaCure Mobile Model AC50 Brown Gas, Hydrogen Brown Gas. Uh, the guy who makes it says it's secure. People are using it. Check it out. Just go there, use the, the, the promo code Tin foil hat, three words, and get a discount. Go back to the main page, Sam Tripoli. You will get, uh, yeah, you get a discount with the promo code Tin foil. And then our good friends over at Haley Ray Crystal Go to the, the promo code is Swarm, Swarm 15, 15. Get 15% 15 off, off all your crystals, all your quartz, all uh, you name it. What do we got here? Look at all this stuff. All this stuff. All the best. You can do it right there. It's all part of the best crystal shop on the internet. Jewels, bracelets, clusters, you name it. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Candles. You name it. You got it. Swarm 15. Thank you for supporting the show. We love you. And uh, thank you so much for your support. Check out this clip from the latest Cash Daddies. So, so... I want to get into something with you because you, you, you want to talk about socially responsible investments. And it's very interesting because we've kind of been having this discussion before you came on about uh, ESG, uh, where I feel we're in this kind of anti-business business era where a lot of uh, large businesses are trying to play to a bunch of investment firms for money in their company. And We've seen uh, on a small scale that there's been pushback. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, what what is socially responsible investment? I would say my definition is when you have win, 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 not only for your portfolio, but for the other two Ps, the planet and other people. So give an example. There is a gold mining company in the middle of South America, somewhere in the Andes, very remote region. They went to the school there and they set it up with Wi-Fi and they gave every kid a tablet. Now, obviously, that costs money out of that gold company's bottom line. But hey, lo and behold, six months down the road, when they were operating that mine, they didn't have indigenous protesters blockading the operation saying we were cut out of the profits. In fact, they support the mine because the mine supported them. Now, whether or not they do it for altruistic reasons or they do it because they are thinking about their own bottom line, it still has the same effect, right? They're still helping in that community. So even if we're kind of skeptical about social responsible investment or SRI or ESG, whatever you call it, um, it has that knock on effect of just aligning good community operations with good business operations. Does that make sense? Unless well, they gave the kids the, uh, lab, the uh, tablets because those kids were working overtime in the mine. <laughs> so, so I uh, I understand what you're saying. I, I, I there's a lot that I agree with you on, like how we and I battle on this all the time uh, about you know your feelings on the ethics of the company versus making a very smart investment. There's certain things I don't want to invest in. You know, I I try my hardest 
Uh, I, if I could get out BlackRock, I would do it. But I think that that at, at the you know, if you go deep enough into who's investing, who's investing into the investment, to the investment, you're gonna end up on BlackRock at some point. They've got their tentacles and everything. But you know, it's like not to get into a science discussion or anything, but. Like uh, Howie and I disagreed on Pfizer. I wasn't. A, I'm not a Pfizer fan. Howie was a Pfizer fan, and how he invested in it. And I, Howie, did you make money on that investment? I've made money on it. Right now, it's trading it right where I bought it. It's at thirty nine, thirty eight, forty bucks. But it again, it it, it pays a four percent yield. So if it stays at forty and inches up over the next three years, it's a pretty good investment. And I don't say I love the company. I love the fact that the company's worth billions and billions of dollars and they have good cash flow. And it's it's a, it's what I like to call a pretty safe investment. So it's tough to disagree with that one. It's a well, that that is the question. Like, how do you operate? We, we, we go deep, homeboy. <laughs> Eric, open your mind. <laughs> Drink. From the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. <laughs> That's some interdimensional <laughs> shit. <laughs> Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Tim foil hack, Tim foil hack, Tim foil hack.